This episode is brought to you by Summer of Soul. For 50 years, footage of the 1969 Harlem Cultural Festival sat forgotten, keeping an incredible event from history hidden until now. Directed by Questlove, Summer of Soul features never-before-seen performances from Sly and the Family Stone, Gladys Knight and the Pips, B.B. King, and more. Join them and relive a joyous celebration of Black and Latinx culture. Now playing in theaters and on Hulu. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Too Hot to Handle wrap up. We are covering episodes eight to 10 of season two of Too Hot to Handle. We did it. We're at the end. We're done. I'm your host, Kirsten McKinnis, and I have another amazing panel today. I'm joined by, honestly, two of my closest friends in the world, uh, oh, which, like, <laughs> come on has been a close friend but it's fine i'm gonna say it uh one of my besties jenny autumn is here jenny how are you i'm great i i learned a new term through my experience and too hot to handle i thought i'd heard it all but um i found something that describes the feeling that i am feeling being able to podcast with the two of you and it is emotional semi (laughs) that is what i feel I actually have an emotional full heart on because of this. I mean, I'm just trying to play it cool, but I mean, like. I too am emotionally aroused. I can't even wait. I can't even wait for my uh, introduction. I'm coming in premature. (laughs) That's right. Uh, You heard him premature. Chappelle is also here. Chappelle, how are you? (laughs) You thought I was going to last 20 seconds? Hell no. I'm here. Oh, I'm so happy. It it wasn't even our good podcast. It wasn't even our good podcast hand. Um, (laughs) Hi, Kristen. Hi, Jenny. How are (laughs) y'all? I'm Great. so excited. I, am I went from a semi so. to fully. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm, the, I'm done. done. I, the, the load is blown. Unlike Nathan, I am I am a shower, not a grower. So I come in hot every time. <laughs> we come straight out the out the gate. Uh, oh, maybe it's for the best. <laughs> maybe it's for the best that Rob couldn't be here today. Uh, I would just be like, I I left uh, hanging out with my children for this. <laughs> yeah, that's nonsense. Uh, but you know what? Hopefully, he's listening. Anyways, hi, Rob. Uh, so, <laughs> miss you, Rob. <laughs> miss you. Love you, Bay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so too hot to handle. Jenny, what are your thoughts on like this? Like, we haven't gotten your thoughts on the start of the season before we move into these last three episodes. Like, like, how did you feel about the the viewing experience of too hot to handle? Uh so many things. Um, I will say that. Th- I've been doing a lot of like talking, like speaking out loud, thinking out loud while watching this. Um, and like, I've just been like, what this, her, him, like $3,000. You didn't even finish. Like I'm constantly like talk, like it's really been causing me to react a lot, like, and out loud, like not like, I'm not just having like brain thoughts in my like tiny little head. I'm, I'm spouting them out because I'm, I'm feeling so incredulous about um, so many things that I've experienced. Um, I will say I've enjoyed this run through a lot more than I thought I would. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm shouting at people, but at least they're making me feel something, you know? Yeah. Like, it could be something. worse. I have an opinion on, on people. Um, I'm remembering people to an extent, uh, some of them, but, <laughs> uh, I, I thought it was like a fun season. I, and I think the last, you know, the last three episodes are like a little bit like, I don't know, touchy this, feely. This could have been two episodes. This could have been two been. episodes. This could have been an email. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you could have CC'd me on it and it would be yeah. fine, but, <laughs> but I've had fun with it. And honestly, like I said, like any any opportunity to talk to the two of you on a podcast, like they could have been the worst casting ever, and I probably still would have been happy to do it. But I thought it was actually pretty fun. I couldn't believe. I mean, I know that they're just, they're they're going to cast people that are stupid and are making bad choices, and that's like what makes the show work. And like obviously, what 
this would be a stupid show if they made this premise and everyone just followed the rules. But it has me shouting every time being like, what? <laughs> Why? That's not worth that. You know what you could buy with that? Like, that's a I... down payment. I'm like a car or something. See, I I know I like when they break the rules. I think that's why these last few episodes were not that entertaining because there yeah. weren't like so many rule breaks. Um, Chappelle, I know you had did not watch season one of Too Hot to Handle. Mm-hmm. You only watched this because I told you the premise of the show. How mad at me are you about this? <laughs> okay, I had a journey. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I did only watch this because. I mean, I wanted to talk to you about it on the podcast. I was like, I, it's crazy to tell me to watch something. I'm going to watch it so I can talk to her. Cool. I yeah. get to talk to Jenny even better. Yeah. Uh, this show stressed me out. I, I'm a, <laughs> I am a very interesting person. I can admit that. I'm a little weirdo. But like things like this, touchy feely, like emotional ass shows, they, they, they make me feel uncomfortable. So like the beginning of the show, you tell me the premise is to not have sex and we win money. I'm like, bet cool a competition i can sink my teeth into this but then you're like oh but she really likes him i'm like oh mess even more something i could sink my teeth into that oh yeah well she's making her jealous he's making they're fighting i'm like yes yes give me more and like i'm stressed out and they're they're losing money and i'm watching all this money go away and i'm crying because the money's leaving and i'm like sad because i have to watch these people catch feelings for each other but then when they caught feelings for each other i was like ah, what are we doing here you know like i am very mm-hmm. happy for you people but for my television watching pleasure, the mess, the drama, the fighting, the cheating, the losing the money. That's why I came here. So, yes. yeah, to get to these last three episodes and it's like, oh, do you want to be my girlfriend? I want to be a boyfriend and meet my family. And I just want to I said, like, oh, I didn't come here for this. I don't watch The Bachelor. I don't. I don't do it for this reason. I don't want these things. Get back to crab grabs and you know uh rumpy puppy and then you got me okay the I mean, first three episodes had me hooked i don't okay? want the rumpy pumpy i mean i just don't want that to be like a, a term i ever hear no again these life, super but, sexy no. super spreaders did not do this whole season for us to discount rumpy pumpy but the thing Here's- is is the show did not invent rumpy pumpy rob and i googled it it's a I real know. british slang but i listen i am happy to live in my Canadian bubble where this is like one piece of culture that we haven't <laughs> taken from the Brit. I don't need this in my life. I don't I'm, need to know that anyone has ever said this. I'm going to start using the term rumpy pumpy. You are not hey, to me. I'm not yes, right. No, I'm You're the only to you, Jenny. I'm going to text no. you. <laughs> Listen, Exclusively already, to Jenny Autumn. Yeah, I'm gonna I've already had pumpy. to deal with you guys saying the H word, you know, and hearing this like constantly on this show and you know how I, I feel about it. I gave a content warning at the start of the season on the podcast. That I, I, the <laughs> I appreciated the acknowledgement, but the problem, and here's the thing, I should clear this up from the jump. It's not like it upsets, okay, people are very upset by like the word moist. It doesn't bother me. Well, you have to um, give a content warning for that. Okay, sorry. <laughs> don't say, well, please don't, please don't swear on the podcast, Jimmy. <laughs> Do we have a timestamp where we can add this in? No, um, no, no. <laughs> Just fix like, it in post. It's not like I'm I not have like that. <laughs> visceral reaction to the word horny. I have a problem horny. with people uni- using it earnestly. If you are using the word horny earnestly like seriously like you're texting someone saying like oh my god i'm so horny i'm literally like my emotional and physical semi anything is dead like that is the worst thing you could possibly say and these people are just tossing it around like <laughs> like th- th- this is the best descriptor of their feelings so and i hate how, it <laughs> how do you feel about um i know it is it's a very british thing to say when people say that they're feeling randy how do you feel they're about randy, that well, baby. first of all <laughs> I, just, I can't yeah, hear the I word Randy without thinking Randy of Randy Newpole. Okay, I'm feeling Newpole, so I'm like, baby. That, yeah, like that is just so weird. That's extra weird. A little for Newpole me. play. Yeah, you don't <laughs> no, like Newpole? Newpole play. That's what they call it in, in British. It's oh, in, no. in Britain. Oh, no. <laughs> Newpole. Newpole play. Yeah, get down with the Newpole play. Oh no! Oh no! Okay. Is that an androgynous? Zone? Oh, oh Newpole. <laughs> <laughs> That's an androgynous zone, yeah. That is an androgynous zone. <laughs> uh, 
The nuple play is the in nuple play. To the androgynous zone. Right. <laughs> I I think okay, I think we should we should talk about these last episodes uh, uh because we've we already gone to. off the we do have I to. will say <laughs> but I think I will we can, like, like zoom through and then just like Yeah, because a little bit. like you said, it could have been two episodes, it could have been an email. But like here's the thing is like to what Chappelle was saying about, you know, I'm here for mm-hmm. the mess and um I don't like, you know, I don't really care about like the emotional part of it. Like I, I can get into the emotional part of some of these shows. I think the problem with it in this context is that I have zero faith in any of these couples or people in general, Um, like these people in general, in terms of like this stage of their life. I'm sorry, like being on a television show for three weeks, if it's even actually three weeks is not going to fix your like shit behavior that is like way more of a learning experience that you're going to have to work on and i just i'm not i i think maybe also just like after love island as well like i'm just like no i mean i was i was standing standing um uh what's her face justine and caleb and, caleb. and they didn't last either so i'm I... standing these couples Mm-mm. from these shows they are like 22 and they haven't had the life experience to like learn from things obviously they're hooking up and like you know acting like they've like found love with each other for the purpose this is me just being totally cynical now Mm -hmm. like for the purpose of like the story of the show and maybe they'll give it the old college try after the show ends but like half of these people live on different continents like it's even more wild than like Love Island, where at least they're in the same country, like all of them usually. Um, I just don't have any faith in these couples. So like I can't get invested in their story. I just can't. I'm late. I'm waiting to see how many Instagram posts they're gonna have together. How many months are we gonna get of this before the notes app uh announcement that they've broken up? So you can't get me with the emotional stuff on this show because I truly don't believe it. I'm actually way more to be way more likely to be invested in a big brother couple, because I do think that like spending three months 24 seven with a person Correct. is mm-hmm. way more likely to Stockholm syndrome. create a uh, <laughs> lasting, <laughs> create a lasting relationship. I mean, look at Christmas in Memphis. All right. It's a happy story. Um, it's pronounced <laughs> Fismas, please. Sorry. I'm sorry. Please okay, respect can their I, uh, ship name. Can, can I confess something to the two of you in a safe space here? Mm-hmm. You, you stand Fismas? No, oh, absolutely not. The opposite of that. <laughs> Listen, nobody's when, listening. It's just us two. Just yeah, when, very honest. We turned it off the recording. <laughs> when Marv and Melinda were on the yacht, talking about their relationship and talking about their feelings for each other and agreeing to be official. I shed a tear. I cried uh, watching the, the finale. You, you fell right that into that woman. trap. Yeah. You fell right into that trap, Kirsten. And it's, I'm, I'm telling this you. This keeps happening because it's always too, like, specifically when there's, like, a, like, an amazing black couple on these shows, I'm always, like, I'm buying in, like, love is real. Like, Justine and Caleb got me. But then yeah. Caleb is a f- effing rat bastard and was in a relationship <laughs> the whole time and that's why i don't believe anymore it's over and i it gets me every time like i still believe like until i get the notes app breakup i would jump in front of a train for melinda and marvin like i i can't yeah. help okay, it it does not hurt that marvin is oh so he's perfect hot. i'm sorry he's so he, he, it's it's unbelievable um it's unfair they're such an attractive couple they're both they're they're very it, on paper and on my screen they are very standable but i've learned my lesson mm-hmm. and because they're breaking up he lives in france. he lives in fucking france yeah don't let he black lives in new fool york you. Do not I'm let sorry. black love fool you. I, as a as a product of what what would be considered black love, let me tell you something, okay? That shit ain't always what it cracked up to be, okay? Because I'm i with Jenny. I was looking at them like, oh, you sad, sad people. But that's more about me, right? And my jadedness. Like I'm not saying anything about those two people as people. Maybe they can withstand it all, but I refuse to put my heart on the line for this, okay? I refuse I to. I I can't I got do too, it. I got too disappointed by Justine and Caleb because. I I spent and I mean like we're just gonna talk about Love Island here apparently. Um I like I it took me I was a slow burn on them as a couple because I really didn't think Caleb was that into her. And then all of a sudden they turned a corner and I was like, 
okay. Like, oh, I yes, believe in this love. Is amazing. And I feel like this is the same story with with Marvin and Melinda, where it's like, you know, he was he kind of pulled back and and she she kind of, you know, came back to him and was like really crying. And then he came around and I'm like, I I can't do this again. Like I, I can't stand you because you're you're gonna break up. Yeah, black love is break beautiful. Up. It's beautiful AF, but it will pull the wolves over your eyes. Okay, and it's dark ass wool. Like I she's look, gonna end, <laughs> she's gonna end up with Peter anyway. So oh my like, god, no, and it can't no, no, stop it, stop it, Jenny, no. stop it. Okay, so stop in, it. in episode eight, it starts back up. With, um, <laughs> Dude, how dare you try to get us on topic? <laughs> okay, so Marvin Melinda got the green light. Whatever they make out, but we get Alana like gathering on the beach, and I have a serious concern. Is okay. too hot to handle a cult because in this last batch of episodes they all started snapping in a weird, creepy no, way. They've been doing that instead they've of been, clapping. Yeah, they've been snapping. And I'm like, I didn't snapping. notice it until these last three episodes. No, and well, they did it a lot. Unsettling. There was a lot. There was a lot to to snap or clap about in these last few mm-hmm. ep- episodes, I guess, because yeah. everyone decided suddenly that they were in love with people after three weeks of and. Quote, it was not quote, three weeks. Three weeks. They days, lied. Roughly, roughly At most. And days. half of At these most. people weren't even there the entire time. Yeah. So <laughs> it's not even three fucking weeks. Um, so but they've been doing this. Like, and I I'm like, okay, this is I don't know what this means. Like, are you is this like, like are you at a poetry like, slam? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She was killing me softly with his words, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> yes, but yes. I mean, Lana kind of talks like that. <laughs> Lana is doing slam poetry the entire yeah. time. You're absolutely right. Actually, I think we're on to something with this. That's, that might be yeah, a They're snapping for Lana's slam yeah. poetry. But so, okay, what got me mad about this? So they get gathered basically to let everyone know that $3,000 has been lost from Joey and Carly kissing. Because, yeah, Joey and Carly are on the season, whatever. But how dare you? What Carly came me, in third place. How dare you? Yeah. But what oh. bothered me? Because Melinda started getting so upset that someone had broke the rules. And I'm like, you nah. had sex last <laughs> night. You went for pasta. <laughs> there's two, there's two schools of thought here. First of all, the people who have broken the biggest rules are always acting the most mad. It's hilarious because of course the hypocrisy is absurd. But I I I appreciated that some I can't remember who said it, but someone was like, You're wasting money on Joey. That was I very was funny. Like, so Chase, Chase, you made they said that. Chase yeah. was very <laughs> upset about the Joey thing. Like, especially being like, Joey, you've been here like three days. What the hell? And it's like, listen, Chase, just because you closed yourself off emotionally to every woman here except Tabitha, uh, like it's other people want to kiss. Like, I'm really sorry. You could have broken the rules with Carly a hundred times and you chose not to. But he well, did. I'm- like, in the beginning, they were breaking the rules within the first three days. Joey has three days of grace yes. like everybody else. Like, everyone <laughs> else came in, well, like, uh, and yeah. was kissing kissing random people. Just like, I don't know, y'all. But, like, they Joey knows. Rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. yeah. The loser yeah. had to kiss Peter, and then the winner also kissed <laughs> Peter. A game that what I could get that? down with. Let me be, <laughs> I be Peter, please play rock paper scissors for my, my for my <laughs> so for my I body. Was, I was clapping for him. I was like, yes, yeah, good. Yes, also, I would have been one of those women. Again, literally, what did I say? I said Peter was being absolutely disgusting, and I thought, is he hot? Am I attracted? To I haven't been able to comment on on Peter, but like, I actually think because so, uh, again, like all of these people are. First these of all, children. way too young for me. These are children. Um, yeah. yeah, like I feel like I probably shouldn't comment on them in the first place because I'm sure that it's probably not legal. But no, it's all of um, them are legal. I can promise okay. that. But it still feels wrong. It's um, frowned upon for sure. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> what? You have a problem with a May December romance? It's, it's towing a line. It's like six Decembers away from each other. Though. But I still. <laughs> I still look at them and think like, okay, if I were injected into this terrible scenario, like what would I do? And I actually think that Peter would be one of the guys that I probably would have been vibing with because he was like silly. He was fun. Like, I'm not like one of those people that like it needs like they need to be like over six feet. Like, you know what I mean? It was like, it was one of those really, things. you know what? You really? Know what? Because me to my face, like, but listen. also, also Jenny, really? <laughs> 
What? It doesn't how, have to be. A, how tall does it have to be? If 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 they're over six feet, then that's very convenient for me. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I'm not convenient. Uh, you're like five foot two. Five three, first of all. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I wouldn't write Peter off just because he's a short king. I, but. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sorry, we're just throwing the term short king around. Uh, I'm sure he thinks of himself I'm that sure way. He is a king to someone. That's there is only big. one short king in my life, and it's not Gagan, okay? <laughs> I think oh, that he had some personality to him, though, which <laughs> I, is, is more than I can like, say. Short enough to be a short king? I'd have never seen you guys standing up. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Malagory is ta- Malagory's taller than me, so I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I- you know, all, all I see is uh, like the upper body I'm of all just people. Saying, <laughs> Y'all can all I'm, be six foot tall. I would never know. I am actually. Just I'm bullying sure. you know, this entire I'm, time. I'm five foot five, just so you know. Oh, first in the stallion. <laughs> I like to be shorter. <laughs> <laughs> we can keep rounding down. Yeah, but th- down. That's, that's the thing about Peter is that like, I know that people were kind of like, oh, the little guy. And like, they, like I felt like he got like a little, like, mm-hmm. you know, minimized, literally minimized. No. <laughs> <laughs> they clicked minimize on the browser. But I felt like he had more personality. And I, I, I completely agree with him being removed when he was. I know that this has not happened in these set of episodes, but like, I think that he had more personality than like half the guys there. Have you seen his TikTok with the weird blood? I've only videos? heard your descriptions of he, so it. So he's just shirtless and he just like pours red wine over himself and talks about blood kinks. It's weird. Honestly, I think that the fact that he's a TikToker would make me like him less. Like that's one of the things I'm like, okay, you're a little shorter. That's fine. Oh, you're a TikToker? Mm, okay, but maybe. For the- <laughs> But, <laughs> maybe so, this won't work so we're saying as a collective that blood kinks are bad question no, mark? we're not we're not i do not kink shame but i will okay. shame peter okay that's fine but it, that's fine. but i heard it's wine and i'm like okay you're just pouring he's wine wasting over red I wine. Do that. that's a no, problem he's wasting wait, red okay, wine wait, it's not go back, wait, wait, it. hold on jenny you do what <laughs> you no, <laughs> I also Jenny pop, pops her top off and in pours her face. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, like wherever it gets. I'm trying to get it in the mouth. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my. Okay. Well, uh, if you uh, lose your mouth, at least it land on your face. You, please, you, out of out of context. I so no, that no, account is about to light no, us up. They, they got me they today. They already have so many <laughs> tweets. <laughs> They got me today, and I didn't even say anything bad. So trust me, this uh, is going to be bad. I saw what they tweeted that you said, and yeah. it was I was bad. quoting a contestant. It wasn't even a my quote. Oh, I wow. said that. Oh. Yeah, they're going. They're coming for us. The, Whoever uh, that is, the RHAP out of context account is why it doesn't respect me. Yeah. They don't respect. <laughs> they're trying. To... It's obvious. Okay, they're, so yeah, so and we this. we bleh. okay so. Two people have to get kicked off the show because they're not respecting the process. And I said, guessing Christina and Robert. And then Lana said, Christina and Robert. And I typed in my notes, on the money, baby. (laughs) It's the right thing because, I mean, everything that Lana said about it was correct. That they were, you know, every, like all the little clips they showed about like everything they ever said about each other was sexual. And also, I was not interested in them. At all. See, I, I feel like Chris, Christina was giving production like good TV. So I was like a little sad to lose her. But Robert, again, I was deeply unsettled by Robert from the moment that I saw him. So I was hair. glad to see him go. It's like the, the hair. hair is very yeah. upsetting. It yeah. was, a, and I agree with everything you've said up until this point. It was a confusing shade. Everyone's like, oh, with the blonde hair. I'm like, mm, that's, that's not blonde. blonde. I am blonde. Yeah, the, that's the, not the, blonde. It was the style as well. There were some times where he styled it and he was like, okay, fine. And then there were times like when he got the moment he gets eliminated, it's like windswept. Sir, did you just get off of like, you know, like like some type of bicycle or something? Like, he why did your hair look like on this? the swing set in the ocean. <laughs> okay, but like you're on TV, constantly comb your hair like all the time. Because I would. Um, the, <laughs> the other thing is that like, it just very much felt to me like a marriage of convenience where it's like, we both want to be on the show. Mm-hmm. You know, the storylines with everyone else aren't going to work out. We both just got here. Everyone is a 
attractive to, you know let's like in terms For of the like they're gonna get passed Jenny's on doing air quotes on the well i'm just saying like i think that that's subjective and i wouldn't say that i'm personally attracted to like all of the people on this cast but like in terms of like putting you on a show yeah these people are attractive so it's like you're just defaulting you're like yeah like after a couple of drinks apparently only two a night um i could want to make out with you like i didn't feel like there was any actual connection between these two besides being like oh yeah like we could hook up that would be cool jenny i would make out with anyone after two drinks well at this point i mean i've done less (laughs) (laughs) i sniffed alcohol and i said you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you know, you got, wait, but you guys, this is kind of, this is like the moment of like television though that I'm talking about that loses me because I came into this thinking like hot dummies on an island trying not to lose money, but they're so horny they can't control themselves, right? Like that was the premise. But now you have like, oh no, y'all are horny and that's it. Y'all are one dimensional, so y'all have to go. And I'm like, no, no, no. That's the only intrigue we have right now. <laughs> like, because like at this point, everyone else has been berated to the point where they're not going to do anything. Yeah. Like Melinda and Marvin better not do it. They lost like twenty thousand dollars. Like y'all can never touch any, touch each other again, you know. But like the the two that I was most concerned about messing up is like is this pair, and you're getting rid of them. I'm like, oh well, well now what? But you know, there's still that hope that Cam will screw up because he's Cam. But aside from that, I'm like, you got to bring in more pairs, and of course they do bring in more people. But it's still like for that for me, I was like. Ugh, this is where it's starting to lose its luster for me just because I know what show I signed up for and right. this is not it I signed up for Hot Dummies on an Island not Hot Dummies trying to find love that's different that's not what I thought this was I do feel like the branding and like the like I don't know the way that it was explained where it's like oh well you people have had a hard time like finding like real connections with people but it's like I almost feel like those people were like, I'm not interested in that. Like there are numerous people on this cast that are like, I'm here for fun. Like literally multiple times in these sets of, in the set of episodes, Tabitha's like, I'm just here for a fun time. And it's like, okay, well then like if, if the show wants people that are going to, you know, do their best to try to like, scale down their thirstiness um, to find a real connection with someone because they're actually looking to get into a relationship with someone that maybe doesn't even live in the same continent as them. Like, then why are you casting people that don't care about that? You know what I mean? Like, figure it out. Like, do you want this to be this or do you want it to be this? Like, I do feel like there's a little bit of like an identity crisis with this show. Yeah, but I'll take it one step further. For me, if I want drama... You want to keep the one person around who doesn't, who's not here for that, right? Because right. you want Tabitha inviting people in the shower, even though they're in a, like they're coupled up. You want, you know, like um, the woman who got Christina, yes, yes, her, yeah, the yeah. woman who got voted out. Like you want her to be like, screw it, I want to break the rules because you want to keep them around. So for me, even if you have those people on the same cast, you don't get rid of them. You get rid yeah. of Kayla, who doesn't do anything, right? That's Just what like, I'm saying. I'm like, what is the so so? What is your what is your purpose here? Like, you got rid of Kayla because yeah. she wasn't making connections with anyone. So it's like she's not giving you your romance uh, storyline, and she's also not breaking any rules. But then I'm like, then you you. I mean, but, but again, I even though Robert and Christina were like the most likely to be breaking rules, like I just wasn't. Yeah, invested no. in them. They, seem, uh, they seemed a little maybe because they were later com- commerce, but I just really. Uh, I mean, I can't say anything well, say, about Robert is normally not a later comer. comer. <laughs> he, he normally just he arrives very quickly to the scene. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, Mr. 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 20 seconds of that. This episode is brought to you by HP+. Plus. In a world full of smart devices, shouldn't your printer be smart too? It is with HP+. Plus. These printers know when they're running low, so you always get the ink you need delivered right when you need it. Plus, you save up to 50% on ink, so you can print whatever you want, as much as you want, any time you want. Huh, that is pretty smart. Get six free months of instant ink when you choose HP+. Conditions apply. Visit hp.com slash smart for details. Support for this podcast comes from Invent Together. According to studies, less than 13% of all inventors who hold a U.S. patent are women. Black and Hispanic college graduates patent at half the rate of their white counterparts. But we can fix that 
By increasing participation in innovation and patenting by underrepresented groups, it would quadruple the number of American inventors and increase annual GDP by almost $1 trillion. Invent Together is a coalition of organizations, companies, universities, and concerned citizens committed to ensuring that everyone has the opportunity to invent and patent. Because the more diverse the American patent system gets, the stronger and more successful our nation will become. What can you do to help diverse inventors patent and unleash economic opportunity? Find out at inventtogether.org. Learn more and take action today. This episode is brought to you by Madewell. Ready to step up your denim game? The experts at Madewell use premium fabric and the latest denim technology to make super comfy, never want to take them off jeans in fits and styles for everyone. The kind of jeans you'll reach for again and again. Get $20 off your online jeans purchase by using code SPOTIFY20 at madewell.com. Terms apply. Please see madewell.com slash promos for full offer details. Okay, I also wanted to talk. I'm sorry, I'm derailing us here because I feel uh, like we've are gone you're so far off. Us? I'm bringing us actually back to the yeah, rails. We're derailing we're talking I'm about this show, I promise. Uh. Um, so, okay. I noticed that Chase has really tiny nipples also, and I that needed okay. to be as a man, <laughs> as a man with tiny nipples, please respect show our, me. our Chappelle said show we me. exist. I can't see it. I can't see it. I, mean, I would say that's tiny. Not compared, chases were smaller. I love the bounce that I just got, though. Yeah, I got a little, yeah. Got yeah. A little team, Chappelle, a little t- like, lifted the shirt and, like, jiggled it. The little titty, a little titty, titty play for y'all. Had, we saw his <laughs> brand, too. We, we call it no. nuple play where I'm from. Nuple <laughs> play? No. Yeah. This is a thing now. Anyone Everyone's wishing this was a video podcast. I'll never be okay. Yeah, yeah <laughs> and guess what? It's not. I was just <laughs> and I'm not releasing the Sorry. video. It's not happening. <laughs> but look, look, look. To Jenny's point, though, I think for me, I felt like the show marketed itself to me as hot dummies on an island trying not to have sex. But the show to, is, is telling them we want you to make meaningful connections. If the show told me, can we take these hot dummies and get them to make meaningful connections? Then I would know what I was going into. But I still might watch it. But that's not what I thought. You know, I thought yeah. like this is a contest of money, you know, and we're going to keep tempting them and getting them drunk and putting them into tantalizing situations where they are forced to try to determine if they want to keep the money. But actually, it's like a lot deeper than my shallow ass is. And it, it tried to make a statement about something. And I hate that. But I also think that that's probably bigger than whatever I thought the show could have been. So I, I hear exactly what you're saying. It didn't need to be a romance show. And I don't believe in the romance of any of these people in this context. So it's like they could have just leaned. They were already leaning in that direction of being trash. You know what I mean? It's like, then just, do you think that if they handled like the money thing differently, that it could have like, because there was so much like ambiguity about the the pot that, of but money. But that's this what the show does. This show will not tell you the rules ahead of time. Mm-hmm. They will not tell you how much things cost. They will not tell you how the winning like works, how the pot works, who gets the money. They didn't do it in season one, and they didn't do it in season two. And then season two was different from season one, both right. in the cost Literally. of what things were, yeah, and. In how the prize was won. And like, thank God, because like, if they had had the same prices as last season, they would have been at zero dollars within three days. It's like the whose line is it anyway of like the like, you know, Mm -hmm. hot dummy on the island show. But like, this is the this is the thing is like, if you had personal pots of money, like, I do think that it's a different game. Like I was Mm -hmm. I was literally saying this to Kristen. I was like, this would be easy for me because I am motivated by people being mad at me so if i'm like spending other people's money and they get mad at me like i don't that's not a situation i want to be in if it's my Mm. own money i'm a i'm an idiot like i like i would be a stupid person and spending the money being like hey i'm here for this this is a fun time and if, if i have a quote unquote connection with someone yeah, I'll spend a little bit of money. But if I know I'm spending other people's money, then I yeah. might act and they're going to get pissed off at me. That's going to motivate me to not do that. So I'm like wondering if like 
the the changing the format of like how it works would that make any different would it make people less inclined to like do something because it's like they're spending literally their own money that they know they're gonna get like i don't know Mm, yeah maybe i I also i think having the joint pot does give people more incentive to like like you said get mad at each other though like like Mm -hmm. you just pissed away like i've been with like who who is it he's been with m uh, cam has been with m for like for weeks or for seven days, roughly at this time, at this Weeks. point. And yeah. And so, and so of course he's pissed because he's like, we have been dying to have sex. How dare you in this breakup thing that Melinda and Marvin have been doing? Like, how dare y'all to be the ones that have sex when we clearly have a connection? We have not strayed. We two, uh, the two of us have been breaking like tiny rules because we can't, you know, keep ourselves away from each other. And so maybe that's where that comes from. But I'm yeah. more in the, in the camp of maybe like gaming the system because we see in this episode that they go and like, Oh, you know, if you can spend the night together without, you know, without doing anything freaky, like you win, what, $25,000 almost? Yeah. Okay, so like for that, I'm thinking if I win us $25,000, each of y'all can go. Spend. Yeah, like, but even, even but y'all. Was, but they like, had already lost them 20 grand I just because love, of having sex. So it's like they were just trying to get that back. For like, yeah, but so for me, it's like money in the bank. Though, when you think about <laughs> the cam and emily of it all when they had the opportunity to earn twenty thousand dollars for the pot and they thought they did yeah yeah but they Tragic. had not um that like those are the moments we want on this show yeah yeah um the but show, Kate. if i went twenty thousand dollars i just feel like me i would oprah to everybody i'd be like you get a kiss you get a kiss like all y'all do stuff look and under your chair there's yeah. a kiss yeah, like, kiss, maybe a hand job. Maybe a hand seem to be, beak. We're classy. They seem to be plentiful here on this on this <laughs> show. But I'm saying I want twenty thousand dollars for us, and I do have more opinions about that. So I'm gonna put a pin in that. We can come back to okay. that later. Okay. Yeah. I think it's different if you went ahead and hadn't already lost a bunch of money and then gained the money, because then I would be like, hey. You guys wouldn't have had that money if it weren't for me being a good person tonight. Now I'm also gonna have myself some fun tonight. Like, yeah, I'm not gonna spend it all, but like the, um, that money is in the pot because of me. But I think it's different in the in the situation with Marvin and Melinda, where like, yeah, they they were the reason they were down twenty grand. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, okay, I think we should probably talk about the workshop that they send Carly and Chase to. Oh, uh, we have to. <laughs> we I, I don't want to touch on it for too long, but Why? basically, like the essence of this workshop is that uh, they send Carly, Chase, Joey, and um, Tabitha, but then they make them switch partners so that Chase and Carly get their closure. And it's basically like one of them will be gagged and the other gets to just say whatever they want with no response and then vice versa, which is literally Literally what they do at the final bonfire in Temptation Island. So, like, it's oh. not an original thought. Uh, Shocking. But, well, except they don't gag them on Temptation Island. You're just not allowed to talk. Uh, mm. I like the the gagging part. I liked more. when Carly like, <laughs> tied it tight on Chase. She yeah, was like, I'm yeah, enjoying yeah. this. And then yeah. she was just holding it in front of her mouth. Uh, yeah. um, why? Like, I have a question. Why were, on him. why were yeah. Joey and Tabitha there? That seemed completely yeah, unnecessary so, because okay. it was like they were pretending as if they were also participating in the activity they have no relationship to each other they're literally just there to watch them have a conversation it was so weird i think it was just in order to get both carly and chase mm-hmm. there i think they just were like okay we'll bring the person that you're in a couple with we'll make it seem like it's a workshop but actually it's for carly and chase so that you can get closure it oh, was but they made it strange. about that they could have just invited just the two of them it just seems so like on a tv show they're on a show they're on a show like no. they have to go if the camera people are like come here listen no. we learned from kayla that they could be on the show and we cannot and, and see not them. be on the show at the same time yeah <laughs> but listen i i but i i see the vision because if i'm chase and I've moved on and I'm not thinking about Carly and I have my eyes on Tabitha. If they're like, Carly wants closure with you coming to say, I'm like, but, you know, no, hell no. Mm-hmm. She can go on. Like, that's not my business. Carly needs to get over it. It's like people here go make meaningful connection with someone else. So you have to tell me that Tabitha is going to be there. Or I'm not going to go. Like, if you're just like, Carly wants to yell at you for five minutes and we're going to gag you while she does it. Like, no, the hell. But if you're like, oh, you and Tabitha, we need to work on connection. Like, OK, Tabitha's going to be there. And then so- you spring it on me. We're all doing this together it doesn't just feel like an attack on me because that's how I would have felt if I was in his position if it was if it wasn't for the other two people 
Do you think that Tabitha being there in for like it kind of influences Chase to be on his best behavior because he's like, well, I can't be an absolute dickhead mm-hmm. to Carly in front of Tabitha because I'm still just trying to wheel her. Like exactly, but the, okay. yeah, that in just in general, it validates the 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 thing. It validates the exercise because if you just tell me like, hey, we understand that y'all two have had a tumultuous time here. We want to make this. We want to get y'all some closure. I'm going to say I have closure. She's the issue. She has the issue. She needs to find closure. But why do I have to be there? And I'm not saying that's the right answer. But if I'm in his position, that's exactly what I'd be saying. Like, I found somebody that I like. I want to spend time with them. Why do you have me over here massaging Carly's like ego and her like feelings and her insecurities? But what everything she said was valid. Everything she, she said was true. Yes. She went laid into him. him. Yes. But if I was in his position, I definitely wouldn't have like agreed to that. If you hadn't said, okay, Tabitha and Joey are involved. It's a team building against not for everybody. You can't just isolate me and be like, hey, I see you're having a good time. Why don't you come over here and get yelled at for a little bit? It wouldn't work for Chappelle. And it didn't work for Chase either. <laughs> it was uh it was a whole thing, but it it gave them some closure. Carly feels good with Joey. Chase is like really into Tabitha, which is uh, I hate it. I hate very it. strange because it's like it. you, you don't know her. You just know that she's hot. Like you gotta stop. Uh, no, like she's hot with an accent. <laughs> you don't know her. It, it, but he does. Like I. <laughs> oh my god! Like, listen, there are good I people understand. on both sides. I just feel like we should hear his side of the story. Like, oh listen, my God. have you Do seen have her? To? I'm like, ah, I, Wait, hit it, Chase. I, I, have a, I have a question for you. <laughs> yeah. So in the second batch, in the third batch of episodes we talked about on this podcast, mm-hmm. there was a scene where all the women were like burning the things they want to leave in the past. And all of the men so were just humping together, like, like comparing their technique. Do men do that? <laughs> okay, so here's my theory because I watched the same oh episodes you guys watched, and I saw that too. And my, I was like, "What?" But I think <laughs> it's, I think the issue here is that Nathan is a stripper, and so Nathan has been dancing and grinding on people this whole time. So I think he was like showing them moves. I don't think that this was is like, like the prompting. Yeah, you I don't, don't think that's how they. Um, yeah, the I don't think. Pumping. Yeah, I think he was showing people because he's been dancing the every every time they show Nathan, he's dancing. Like even when he was dancing on the woman that he didn't connect with, I can't think of her name right now. It'll come to me in a second. But like Marissa. he's always yeah yeah he's always well, they grinding did on connect, someone. Uh, yeah, but yeah, we'll talk about it. They disconnected. Um, but yeah, like he's always doing that kind of air humpy thing. And so I think this was just like him, like showing like stripper moves. I don't think this was like them doing a tutorial because if you leave it to these people, they all say that they have sex all the time every day. Like I can't mm-hmm. even go three seconds without thinking about it. And so I don't think we would need to like compare techniques. I think I would just trust your judgment at that point. You know, I don't so, even fully believe like if we're being ooh, real, who don't yeah, we like, believe, though? Now, let's dive into this. Who's lying? <laughs> this is a game Kirsten and I like to play often. Like who, who who's lying? Who, who's lying about this? Uh, game we play off. <laughs> we don't we? <laughs> Kirsten gets drunk and calls me in the middle of the night. Like I think this person is lying, and I'm like, Kirsten, I think they're telling the truth. She's like, they're definitely lying. I'm like, I, <laughs> you're misrepresenting our well, I can't, repre- in a deep I can't represent it the way it's supposed to be because they <laughs> <we> get- <laughs> yeah, you're making me sound like the best. So what no, are you lying about? What are, I what just, are you I'm lying trying about? to people just be lying about stuff, you it's know? It's fine. Okay. Uh, it's anyways, not fine. Don't do it. <laughs> moving on. So who is lying from this cast about their um love promiscuity? Yeah. Uh Joey. You think so? I mm. I have a big problem with Joey because in the, these episodes, Carly says that she normally is drawn to douchebags, but Joey is so good for her. And I'm like, uh, Joey seems like a douchebag to me. Well, let's I find mean, out, Kirsten, how hot is Joey to you right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how we measure Wait, it. Wait, how tall that's is Joey? That's what I'm saying. It's like, <laughs> how much he actually does he looks have? pretty tall, yeah. <laughs> is he heavy on the thigh side or not? Hey, <laughs> no, you stop it. How dare you? Kirsten this is, is not immediately regretting wait, a <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Joey Joy is six foot four. Famous oh, the deal oh, Lord, Kirsten, Hit the DMs, Kirsten. It's time. <laughs> we no, found it. No. Toxic, tall, and he has thighs. Does he have thighs? I don't remember. I don't know. He's, he's the only one he way to find skinny out. Skinny to me. Uh, it's only one to find one. Only one way to find out. Listen. You know? 
Send the DM. Nothing wrong with a nice hockey thigh. No, Kristen, no, there's a lot wrong with hockey thighs. Hockey I'm thighs. we play blood. I mean, on there hockey. is, but like aesthetically, nothing. <laughs> like, <laughs> aesthetically, I'm on your side. But yeah. Practically, it's almost always a bad sign. Hockey players. Uh, so, no offense if you're a hockey player listening to this podcast. It's specifically Unless hockey you're toxic, guys. and then yeah. all offense intended. <laughs> right, but also check your DMs. Kirsten's on the way. No. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. So Nathan and Larissa break up, and it's so uncomfortable. But she like puts him in his place. Like she's like, no, like we've talked about this. What are you like? Where is this coming from? Which I feel like is very on brand with what we saw on the show, where he was like, I don't know if she likes me, and she doesn't know if I like you. And she's like, No, I told you I like you. Uh, Kirsten, I know your opinion on this because I've listened to you talk about it on a couple of the, the panels. But I really want to know, Jenny, what did you think about? about Nathan's like opinion about Larissa and how she feels about him. The whole thing was very confusing to me because I felt like he was like into her. And then it seemed like he was feeling like she wasn't into him enough. And that was why he was upset. So I felt like it was almost like an insecure moment where he was like, I'm raring to go. And she's like, she's having too easy of a time, like playing by the rules. And that makes me feel like she's not interested in me. And so I think that this manifested into like the situation where he had the opportunity to talk to somebody else. And it was like, they seemed more into him from the jump than Larissa did. And so that made him feel like they didn't have a good connection. And if they talked about things and like, cause Larissa's like, we talked about this, then sure. I didn't feel like I ever really saw like a real conversation between these two where they actually talked about how they felt about each other. It was more so like we, the conversations we saw, like when they got green lit, it was more so like talking about like their past and their personal growth. And that was when they got the green light, but it wasn't even so much about how they felt about each other. So there was a part of me that was like, maybe Nathan has a point where he feels like, you know, I mean, they've all been cast for the show because they, the, you know, producers thought that they would have a hard time resisting and he feels like she's having a very easy time resisting. And so he's maybe feeling some, she dove some type of way about him it. when they got the green light. No, she no. got air. There, uh, yeah. Jenny, thank you, though. Because you, yeah, because I agree with you and I agree with him a little bit, too. I think from his point of view. Uh, he's been in the house because they called them mom and dad at some point. Yeah, so we know those two people are acting very like conservatively in comparison mm-hmm. to these other crazy quote unquote kids around them. Um, but I think that's what bothers him is that like you got Cam who physically can't keep his hands off of him to the point where she like is like giving him crab grabs and like he's like masturbating and spend in the, money on the shower and the shower and stuff like that. <laughs> you got Melinda and, and they're like, oh, you know, like, oh, we messed, we messed up. We did this, that we, we did this and that. And then you got the other girls like, oh, I grabbed his willy. Like you got all of that going on around him. And Larissa's like, like not touching him at all, you know? And he's like, yeah. listen, I know you want the money. And I know you want a connection, but like, it's nice. I think he said it. He, he wants to feel like he's wanted. And even mm-hmm. though she's saying it, look at how like animalistic these other people are being around each other. Like they are, they are constantly like, I can't keep my eyes. I want to dry hump them in my sleep. And we never get that from a Larissa about him. And so I think, and, and guys talk, we do. And so, you know, like he sits around and like, he's talking to his, 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 his guys and they're like, Hey, you know, like, so she was telling me that she can't wait to rip my clothes off. We heard that from other people. We yeah. never hear that from Larissa about him. And so I think that's where his insecurity comes from. Now, I agree with Kirsten, though. She said it. I'm very much a person that if you tell me what it is, I t- hey, say it to me. Don't let me you have, to, have to just take people at their word. Like when yeah. you're in a like romantic situation, someone tells you something you have to just take them yeah, out of your word. But, you can, but like, it, you can't just like read into it because yeah. that, and that just drives you insane. Exactly. But it's extremely difficult. And so that's what I'm saying. I, I get what he's saying. I agree with Jenny. Like you got casted on this show because you were supposed to be so horny that you can't keep your hands off of somebody and for $20,000. You can't stop having sex. Like we legit, we expect you to kiss people and we are going to charge you $3,000 for it. You were supposed to be that type of like, ha- like that type of discipline. And he's laying on top of her when they're in the little suite together. And she's like, he's like, right, does this tempt you at all? And she's like, no. Like, oh, damn. Not even, a, she not even a little bit. I think her concern was that if she said yes, 
it would be like it would escalate even more and be even harder like i think it yeah. did tempt her but she was like no i'm following the rules like we're we're not losing more money you speak like, it into existence you're yeah, like but, no if i say no like i it's a no yeah but he's like listen they've like melinda just lost twenty thousand dollars for us they had sex you can't give me three I can't get I can't three get three thousand dollars. I can't get they two thousand dollars. They were in a twenty four hour challenge to win a reward. I mean, mm-hmm. but just in general, when we get out of the reward, hey, let's break a rule. Like, just touch it. It's two thousand dollars. <laughs> just touch it. I don't gotta finish. You know. So I I understand <laughs> what I'm just talking about precedent set on the show. You guys, I'm not talking about my just own personal team. Just if the, just if, the, it. Uh, if the out of top, like the out of context account tweets, just touch it. Chappelle's right. I'm gonna lose it. Okay, uh, but, you're getting canceled. Oh my god! <laughs> but just you know, saying. like they're tweeting that. Like that uh, tweet is, is already. The moment out. I said it, I was like, shit. <laughs> you know, like damn it. Okay, but no, seriously. Yeah, but I'm not editing it out. <laughs> no, oh, that's fine. Don't Sorry. edit it out. Listen, I said what I said. <laughs> but no, but I think that's what his point of view is. It's just that like you have all these people who are like, they can't even think of the idea of going 24 hours without touching each other. And she's like, yeah. no, I, I want to win the money. It's like, okay, but I want you to not want, like, I want you to be able to, to be willing to risk it, I guess. And so, yeah, I, I can see where he was coming from. I don't necessarily agree with him, but I could definitely see the thought process. I'm glad I think we're they, getting the men's perspective here. <laughs> I think that they probably weren't like fully communicating properly. And I think that also there was like a lot of resentment around the way the money was being spent, where we see, we literally see in the, in the set of episodes, the direct, like, you know, result of people being bitter that, you know, um, other people are spending money and they haven't because Ch- Chase and Tabitha hook up during this episode because mm-hmm. Chase is like the last person. Because to- Chase is mad. Chase, yeah, Chase only kisses been- Tabitha because he's upset that Carly and Joey kissed exactly. Tabitha. And he was that's like, okay, literally no, everyone's absolutely not. spending money. I disavow that. No, that's not true. He finally Listen, found he's in not- love with that woman. <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm not saying he's not attracted to Tabitha. I'm just saying that like he this entire time he's been harping on everyone being like like he's been giving confessionals the entire time being like you know like i'm gonna be so pissed if people spent money and then he gets to the point where he's like well fucking joey just showed up and like is kissing carly and everyone's spending money like yeah screw you guys i have this hot girl in my bed i'm going to kiss her like clearly we're not going to end up with any money here so he was just doing it spitefully being like well i've i've earned my place here i've not spent any money and, and I now I, I have, want to spend it with. Exactly. Yeah, now I have a girl here that I'm very interested in with, like interested in. And so like everyone else has spent their money. This is my time. I'm spending money. So I think that that's like kind of how everyone is feeling. Like there's like this weird thing where Nathan's probably like, oh, all these people have spent money like with the with the people that they're with. And, you know, she's not interested in doing that with me. That tells me that she feels some like type of way about me and instead of having a conversation about it you know he he has a date with another girl and he feels like this girl is more interested in me than larissa so we therefore we do not have a connection and l is not into him at all also like nothing else happens with them whatsoever um i do okay i also want to talk i want to talk about the cam tab at the shower thing because it was hyped up like it was gonna be some big thing Okay, yeah, because I have questions. <laughs> Tabitha's just like, I'm going to have a shower. You can watch if you want to. Also, you can join me. And Cam, like, watches her shower for a long time before it he actually leaves the room. Long. Stop no, it. he's in there, like, that was he is edited. struggling. He is he struggling. Was okay. <laughs> So he struggled. He made the right decision, but listen. Yes, but no, but wait, can it I was not that long. About, <laughs> listen, okay. He spent a long time watching this woman uh like uh lather up her breasts before he left the room, and then it's treated like Cam has grown as a person. Yeah. She didn't grow as a person. She's literally saying, Come into the shower, Cam. Just 
open the door. It's like, in. no, up you... the other side of this, like, partitioned, like, like, uh, what is it? The little, the door has got, like, the little grayed out part. So the frosted really glass, but yeah. he's yeah. looking yeah. down. He's looking down. He okay. sees everything. So Listen, he when you say he's grown as a person, we're literally talking about his penis because he's mind. definitely having some sort of moment during this where he's like, Okay, do I do I go I for it? I couldn't believe he didn't go in. I thought he was going to go in the shower, and this was going to be was where to. Emily gave him the third chance that she said she wouldn't give him. Yeah, I was upset because I mean I felt as teased as you know Cam felt by Tabitha getting into that shower where right. we saw the clip of this happening like two episodes prior. We're like. Okay, at some point there's like there's a Cam and Tabitha shower thing, and then we finally get to see like the proposition at the end of the whatever the fir- uh, eighth episode, and I'm like, let's go, let's see this. The trash man is ready to show his face, and ultimately, I we mean, get he doesn't deserve growth. the award he gets. I'm sorry, Excuse they acted me? like he fucking cured a disease Did by like not. not- Chewing on it. That, he, that was all difficult. You know, you have to pick your words uh, <laughs> wisely here. That was a, a, a difficult thing to do. Okay, he deserved all the accolades because Tabitha came here. All and she the accolades. Yeah, I'm said, sure it was I'm very here. hard for him. Okay, difficult, Kirsten. G, stop being a creep. Like, listen, <laughs> he was in a tight spot. <laughs> I think he wasn't. Yeah, he was between a rock and a hard place. We're congratulating tight, him. Yeah. He was between a rock and a hard place. I also and like, it, was, <laughs> it was tough for him. To stop. We got it. So That's the you. The other thing, there, so there was the interview, again, we talked about this last time, but there was the interview uh, with Cam where he was like, I had to have painkillers for how painful my balls were. Okay, I didn't understand him when he said that. I was like, you know, you're very childish. That's like, that's not a thing. But then when I saw this shower scene, I was like, well, maybe we should just hear his no, side. Chappelle. There are good people on both sides second, of the argument. I was like, I was like, is Chappelle going to say that like his balls were so painful watching this scene? I was like, no, I just said, I just think here? that we got to hear him out all the way, all the way. Because Tabitha was like, hey, listen, I know. You, look, I'm right here. Just come in the shower. What's up? And he's like, I already I, came in the shower once. I'm not going to do it again. messed up of Tabitha, to I, be quite honest. Yeah, Tabitha like, is like, I didn't I love this s- for Tabitha. Yeah, she's a like, sexy I decoy. I want to spend money. I don't care. Yeah, that's her knowing her place on the show and yeah. just mm-hmm. being like, I'm here to fuck shit up and, you know, make enough of a name for myself on the show that I get the mm-hmm. fo- followers that come along with it. That's but what she needs. I, as a person mm-hmm. that thinks about things as how I would feel as a person, didn't love it. Yeah, so she was the sexy decoy here. You know, like in Mari, they put you in the in the in like the green room where you're waiting to come out, and then they like let the sexy decoy walk in and she strolls around, and then you get to see your your baby daddy or your husband cheating on you because he's like hollering at the sexy decoy in the back room. That is Tabitha's role on this show, and she played yes. it well. But the problem is I was see, maybe I again, this is more of a commentary on how damaged I am than about these people. Because I am so used to if a woman was to do that. And I'm involved with another woman. I was waiting on Emily to go whoop her ass. I thought that's what was coming. I thought it was going to get out. And everyone's going to agree to these things. Cam is like, he asked you for forgiveness. I saw you. I, I Look, I saw her in the shower. Nothing happened. It was really tough for me. But I fought it and I want to be your boyfriend. Cool. I still was waiting on Emily to be like, cool. Hold on real quick. Let me go handle this bitch right now. And it didn't happen. You know, because Emily happen. handled it the way that we've been saying we want people to handle it, and that the the guy. it's like, mm-hmm. you know, you should ha- take issue with the person that you have the closer relationship right. with that did you the most wrong. Yeah, because, 100%. like, yeah, it's shitty of Tabitha, but also you haven't spent however many days or weeks like building a friendship with this also the situation with cam and emily at this point he has already gone to emily to basically uh speak about his insecurities and i really thought that they had broken up and then i kept being like is he gonna break up with her is he not i was like i thought that was over like if someone talks to me that cam talks to emily about like 
I'm just so scared. I, I would have been like, goodbye, good riddance, goodbye. I will see you never. And so the fact that they're like together when they had the breakup conversation already is just mind boggling to well, me. I think that's the thing though. I think it was more, it was less of a breakup in him, more like flagging, like, hey, this is like, I'm on the edge, right? Like you caught me in the moment where this is normally where I run away. Like, this is it. Like I've, I've been giving you my all. There are three days left on this show. When I leave here, like I could easily walk away from this. So this is a turning point. And I think that was him addressing that. Now, to your point, for me, you come at me like that and then you're probably gonna be like, well, go shit. I don't know what to tell you. It's been been 10, roughly three weeks. It's been 10 days. But you know, like, at like most. yeah, at, <laughs> at most, like 10 days. But like, seriously, I think that's why they highlighted that moment is because it's, it's less about the breakup and more of him saying like, I'm about to, I'm about to be a flight risk you got to, this is where you reel me in. And I think she did a good job about it in that moment. It was honestly, as much as I complain about them finding emotional connections, I didn't hate this, you know, whatever. Oh. I didn't hate it. Um, <laughs> we also get um, Marva and Melinda go into the, uh, this, the private room and they do not hook up at all all night and they win $25,000 bringing goodness. the total up to 55,000 for the final total. But I loved Melinda fully putting the stool in between them. She was like, no, I can't resist you. I need a physical barrier. Well, I I was thinking about like you roll. There's no way they left that stool there because I'm no. like, you roll a little bit and that stool is going to tumble onto you and like crush I think you. There. I, think I mean, I don't think there. it looked that heavy. But I think they left it there because we heard in the first episode, Melinda likes, she likes to have sex in her sleep. She likes to grind. And so she I didn't think, say she likes to have sex in her sleep. She, she said she wakes the bed. up like horny. And I think that the women were having what they have. Wet no, I, no, she said I, she was humping. No, I, I am with you, Chappelle. Like I understood that as like, she wakes up like grinding the bed in her sleep. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so she's like, why would I grind the bed? If when you're here, like this like, perfect specimen next to me. Right. And, um, and people have talked a lot about how attractive Marvin is. And I mean, like she she's not wrong. Like if she woke up grinding him in the middle of the night, nobody would be like, oh, like you whore. People would oh, like, I would have thrown the money away for Marvin. I would throw yeah. all of the money away. For, I, I <laughs> would have been like, oh, pot, it's, yes. I would have been like, oh, it's a hundred thousand dollar pot. That means five times. And then the money's gone and we can do whatever we want. Yeah, Lena's like, that kind of show is going to be on HBO or pay-per-view. I'm like, well, <laughs> s- send me the link because I'll watch. I don't care. <laughs> They're beautiful. These are beautiful people. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. like, they, they could have like just slept. I don't know. Here's like, again, this is me thinking that I have more self-control than maybe I think that I actually have. But like, I'm like, you're wasting a king size bed with this fucking giant ass stool. I'm like, okay, annoying. if I'm not going to be hooking up, I'm going to get a good night's sleep in this bed. Let me spread out a little bit. They yeah. have this giant ass stool between them. <laughs> like, I think a night of cuddling is nice. Oh my God. She dry humps in her sleep. She cannot be trusted. Defund okay. women. Oh my God. <laughs> Chappelle! <laughs> she can't. Hey, stop that. <laughs> Chappelle, but, okay. men have birthdays too. How do, how do we know? How do we know what the line is between cuddling and dry humping? Because clearly Lana has a line. I think so. I think that if it was happening when they were asleep and it's not like intentional grinding, like mm-hmm. how can you be penalized? Like, but how do you know? Unintentional grinding. If how the person's you- asleep. No, so this but is like, what I'm wondering. Fake sleep, though. <laughs> I, think you, I think you can tell when it moves from like passive to active. I think it would be very obvious. I think like, if we okay. examined the tapes, we Some would. Some women sleep straddle. It happens. They just. Do you think climb. that? Do you think that they have like, um, like Big Brother feed watchers? A hundred percent. Are the people because like those yeah, are like the Lana. people that are like okay, like. Um, Jess and Cody at three fifty two a.m. Like uh-huh. there was some sort of weird movement under the covers because That's exactly this yeah. is what I've wondered is because they always act like they can get away with it when Lana legit just tells everyone what the fuck happened and, and do they people think that they like so, is there stuff that happens that gets missed. Yeah, well, that's the thing. She's always very graphic with it, too. She's like, oh, no, there was a crab grab and you didn't finish. Like, Lana, how do you know yeah, that like, I didn't you, finish? Yeah, I like, still, did you again, see whether there was any sort of... Is it like it, an infrared? It's like, been yeah. like seven episodes. And I still can't believe 
that they wasted four thousand dollars on a hand job where he didn't Without even finish. finish. But who told Lana he didn't finish? That's what I want to know. This, this, this. I mean, if nobody, if nobody goes for a towel or a Kleenex or something, like maybe sometimes. Never mind. Listen. <laughs> think, no, if this I want to know. Effect, can just like read the room like, uh, I see you didn't climax. You know, like what? Lana, get out of my business. Also, if I'm in the shower and I'm doing the things that Kev did, I don't expect Lana to know but how the shower is. Thing. You have I cameras think, in the shower? I think Cam could have gotten away with doing that more subtly if he hadn't called a, Had a conversation fucking about meeting it. of yeah. his bros to be like, hey, guard the door so I can jerk off in peace. Yeah, there's not 24 hour live feeds. This is not the Big Brother house. There could not, there could have been a jack shack. Like, I'm sorry. It, that yeah. that could have been I feel like that's why I'm trying to figure out. I'm like, is there stuff that does happen Ooh, that gets missed? That's a better and that's, question. And that's yeah. why every time they break a rule, they act like they maybe uh, they'll get away with it because you think there's more than 50. Yes, this is that what makes I want. sense. That's yeah. what I'm trying to say because I'm like, why are you acting like like you're not gonna have to fucking expose this? Right, like wait, wait, just, wait, 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 wait. This is good. These people literally expose themselves because yeah. they go into the confessional and they're like hopefully lana didn't see that if they yeah. just kept their mouth shut they could get oh, away yeah. with so much oh, yeah. because are they yeah is that, isn't that the way that prompts them to look back at the tapes because uh-huh. well i mean i'm sure there's some sort of like neck beard that's like watching every single thing and is very very excited <laughs> they, about they have their dream job <laughs> yeah so mm. they're looking to see it did, did he finish like, did he finish <laughs> zoom in please i need to make sure that's the, not is that Shout yeah, the butter, or are you just happy to see me? Light in there, right? Um, yeah. No, Jenny, that's a good point. Uh, especially because there, we know that there are definitely moments where the camera is not on them, and we know that every time they lie about it, like, yeah. like even uh, where we see them, like, oh, we just kissed, and then Lana's like, mm, you did more than that. It's like, oh, I grabbed this Billy. It's like, <laughs> oh, okay, but there's no way Lana could have saw that under the covers. But if you go into confessional and you're like, yeah. No, they showed the footage. We saw it well, under the covers. That, 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 that footage did on. not mean that, that. That facial expression did not necessarily translate to grab his willy. That could have been anything. No, you could see the movement under the cover. But that could have been anything. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> never mind. Well, remember when um, um, Peter felt Melinda's uh, mosquito bite? Like exactly. Maybe it was just a very alarming mosquito bite, and you're maybe. like, I'm sorry like, if anyone oh, has. A mosquito bite on their penis, please seek medical help. <laughs> yeah, that sounds terrible. Yeah, that sounds miserable. Um, okay, the, the couples all get final dates. Uh, Marvin and Melinda go on a date on a yacht and they become you boyfriend cry. and girlfriend. They get a yeah. green light. I cried because I'm weak. Uh, don't tell anybody. Yeah, you're gonna get your heart broken. Like, you Jenny, what it. placement in my chart explains me crying at this? Uh, like edge. is it my cancer model like, i don't understand yeah yeah. yeah yeah i would think you're, so. you're also an enneagram eight so you know you're a lot more tender than you want us to be oh shut yeah. up you got a hard exterior but deep down yeah. inside you're oh, a bowl of disgusting <laughs> take it yeah back. no you're take literally watching this being like Back, where like you, you know imagining imagining you know your romantic yacht moment with your marvin and uh-huh. he broke it down your walls. Walls. and is there a well, marvin out there for me someone tell I me mean, where he is here's the thing is like i'm not gonna wish that you have a melinda and marvin type relationship because i'm not fucking sold on it we yet. don't believe it i, I mean i would it. never like, the fact of the it. matter is is melinda went out of her way for like seven episodes of the show to make marvin jealous to realize that he wants her i would never put in the time to try and make someone jealous. Oh, I would. if i, I would. need to make someone <laughs> jealous i would ra- i would simply rather be alone i do not care mm-hmm. i would <laughs> and that's why you ain't had but your yacht moment yet is, the other thing is, I, I to be kind and honest about myself, I also don't know how to do that. So like, okay. it's not a tool I have. So I'm just like, yeah, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, it was it was precious. They they're a couple. I mean, Cute. I'm happy for them in that moment. I'm just having a hard time not Cautiously being cynical about it and being like, yeah. you know, I don't. I get emotionally invested in like 
characters on television shows and then they disappoint me. And this is just one of those things where I'm like, I'm very cautious about this because they've only known each other a couple of weeks. You're calling people your girlfriend. Yeah. You're throwing out the L word. I'm like, it was a strong L word. You guys this were was a L word. The L word was too much. The L word was too much. I'll say horny all day. I'm. You're not gonna catch me saying L word. <laughs> I, I cannot. That's a whole um, different. That's, that's a, a that's a thing. different podcast. That's for another, another time. Uh, type yeah. of thing. Um, yeah. Chase and Tabitha get their final date, and I loved this date because Chase is like, I am so into this girl, and Tabitha's like, this was a holiday romance. Uh, I'm not into you. I hated this. He's like, I'm heartbroken. You have known her for five minutes. Yeah. So how dare you? How dare you? He fed he felt is, things. This is funny because like we're getting we're getting Chappelle talking from the man's perspective. And I'm fucking living because for once on one of these goddamn shows, we're getting the woman breaking the man's heart and being like, Yeah, actually, I'm not that serious about this. And Ugh. like, even though I didn't understand like the situation and why she's there because apparently they want people to fall in love on the show, which I didn't really understand. Right. Like I, I was kind of living for, I'm like, yeah, like I love, I love that for once because you guys talked about this on the, on the, um, the last recap with um, Sasha and Asia, where you were saying like the women are always there as like tools as like, you know, parts of the story that are just like moving the, the men's stories along. And I mean, listen, that that's still very much the story of this whole yeah. season. However, I, I appreciated this one moment where the woman kind of dunked on the man and was like, you know what? I'm actually just here for a good time. And I'm seeing this as just like a fun hookup type thing. I was like, finally, because this is not something we ever get on these shows. Yes. I got I have some thoughts. And and I will start with this. It was refreshing to see kind of like the shift from Carly being in that situation, right? Where she was very into Chase and he did not care. To like Chase now being into somebody yes. who he was very into her and she did not care. And so like I think that is refreshing just from a story standpoint, but also like, yeah, Chase, it sucks. It sucks when that happens to you. But as a man, <laughs> I will say, I my heart bled for him. Cause oh I too God. listen, I had, only, I had only been watching her for roughly 10 days and I too had feelings, okay? Oh and I was like, goodness. if if God. I could if I if like if he's my avatar, I'm doing the same thing he's doing. I'm like, because the problem is Can you choose somebody else to be your see, avatar? The, no, I'm the just, situation no, not, is, not, not, is I'm not that saying, Chappelle now is like, <laughs> I understand because she broke up with him. So now he has to gaslight her so that no, he can no, break up no, with her. no, no. Yeah, that, Kirsten, that is a personal story that happened roughly five months ago. Okay. So <laughs> you what I'm saying about it. What I'm saying is, like, yeah, it sucked <laughs> to watch because like yeah, it, it's kind of like you put yourself in the Carly position again, but now it's for Chase. And like Chase is not my avatar this season. Like there's no no world where I want to be him in this situation at all. But I definitely see like he's probably not used to having to chase. You know, he's a huge guy and like he's talking he's about chase, like, but he does not know. He how does to not chase. chase right. Yeah. And so the fact that she's so cool and like calm and she's not worried about him, it's probably very alluring to him. Like, look, oh, at this, yeah, because Carly is like living and breathing for him very quickly. Like, oh, my God, why are you standing over there? Why are you looking at the other girl? You know, like, she's literally he's like, asking him to cuddle her and like show yeah. her affection. Meanwhile, Tabitha is like, yeah, I might get naked next to you, but I also might go ask somebody else to get in the shower. And he's like, what? You know, yeah. like, but I love you. You know, like that's like that last ditch effort. Like, you're going to leave me. What? Marry me. You know, like, so I, I understand his thought process. No, I do not agree or condone those actions, <laughs> but I get it. That's all I'm trying to say. Um, you're just recognizing your own toxicity. Is I didn't know this okay. is nothing to do with me. Jenna, <laughs> Jenny Autumn, how dare you? I, you not I love you. I love you. Is it hot in here? I'm sweating. Um, I had to take off my glasses. Sorry, Jenny has her foot on your neck. So you actually right. can't. If move. you could be a little kind to your friend Chappelle, it'd be nice, Jenny. Um, <laughs> Can you yeah. take your shirt off? We see the little nipples. Are, are oh you my gosh. It? You want to see my little nipples again? No, listen. Uh, and another thing, though, I love how Tabitha does this basically says like yeah i'm not i didn't come here for that whatever you think you're about to have with me that everybody else has with everybody else 
you're not getting that from me. But also, your friend Cam kind of flirted with him. He kind of watched me shower. Just digest I that a little bit. I loved that. And then Cam, yeah. and then Chase going to Cam to be like, what happened was I because Cam is scared. Cam is like, Chase is bigger than me. Yeah. Like, he's gonna kill me. That's a well, big guy. Is. That's a yeah. big guy. He runs he up plays on you. you football. He you will have tackle to tackle you. Listen, in these situations, when if you are ever confronted, if a man comes at you man to man about his woman and he is six five, two hundred some odd pounds, you throw her under the bus. You blame her a hundred percent. You never take any blame at all. You were innocent. You prayed. You cried, but you did not look at her in the shower. Yeah, you saw her in the shower, but it took everything out of you, and you'll never do it again. You just fold like a lawn chair fold like a bath towel you don't let that big ass man come and crush you behind this woman that you never gonna see again that just broke up with you basically like you throw her under the bus you you bash this woman's name and this is not me telling you this in real life this is me saying to (laughs) preserve your own health save yourself protect your peace peace (laughs) protect your peace (laughs) he said, okay, I'm baby listen I don't know nothing about that I don't know what to tell you you know like that, that's what, that Chase come in you just roll throw your hands up in the air like I'm sorry listen I was <laughs> intoxicated I just I, you know I couldn't see I was having a, 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 my parents had a divorce my then they divorced again you know like I just just start to like throw yourself in his mercy because that big old huge man will beat your ass in the shower and then you don't never want to get your ass beat in no shower let me tell you that Okay, that's a big fear of mine. You don't okay? want it. He, yeah, he, okay. <laughs> the wrong thing be in the shower. That yeah, you don't want to fight all. nobody in the bathroom. Okay, yeah. so you just don't. So no, I, I I don't mind that moment from him. Like throw her under the bus, and also Tabitha, she like oh yeah, we were flirting. And he watched me shower. That's not what happened. You were like, don't you want to come in the shower? Don't yeah, you want to yeah. come in the shower? Come in the shower, Cam. Come in the shower. Come. Well, he already did come in the shower. So. Like, I mean, I gotta come and arrive inside the shower again. You know, <laughs> like do that again, but with me this time. You know, like so. Yeah. So for me, she misrepresented that that moment anyway. So I didn't mind him like just being completely hands off. I I mean, I think that what he said was more accurate to what actually happened than what Tabitha said. Oh, bro, so, sure. Like, he told the n- truth. N- neither he of did. them told the full truth, I don't think. Because he did snatch yeah. her for a little while. But what he They're, said they was both more white lied about accurate it. than but what she said. he was more recognizing, like, it was difficult for me. I right. had, like, a hard time holding back. Like, he easily yeah. could have... he. He could have done a little bit more what like Chappelle is suggesting and just like fully throwing her under the bus. And be like, no, her. I was yeah. running her away like back yeah, to Emily. She, she is a whore and I could never be seen like that. Like, you know, you throw her under the bus. <laughs> but but seriously, though, uh, Chase, he saw like what Cam was basically trying to say is like the Chase, the, the Cam that they know is the Cam who was getting the hand jobs and the, like the, the, you know, the grinding and stuff like that on the first couple of episodes who could not keep it in his pants to save his life, who comes downstairs with the, like the grin on his face. Like, so he's like, look, all of that was in front of me. And I still did not get in the shower mm-hmm. growth. That's growth. Give me credit. And, Chase and I mean, Chase I, gave him the credit. he's appealing to someone who is probably the best person who can recognize what a temptation Tabitha is Mm -hmm. and for possible foreshadowing on like, Hey, look at me and how good I've done in terms of resisting this particular temptation. I don't know. Like it, it, like it could, it could have ended up helping or hindering him. I don't know. My question though, and this is something that I didn't realize because in the moment I'm where I'm putting myself in Cam's shoes in this moment. I'm like, you you did you you did what needed to be done. You have avoided conflict here by not having to fight the big huge man in the shower. Cool, okay. But then Ka- Chase says, "So when are you going to tell Emily?" And that's something that never occurred to me. It never once in the entirety that he was standing in that bathroom occurred to me that he needs to go and share this information. <laughs> And of course, this is a television show. It's going to air very mm-hmm. soon after they they come out of this house. And if he wants us to be his girlfriend and like, you know, I have a real future with her, or even if he just doesn't want her to look stupid, you you share this information. But me being a dummy, it never occurred to me to share that information. So when, when Chase brought it up, I was like, oh, shoot. Like now you have to go and say this to the person who said you can't have any more chances to the person who said, like, I refuse to let you hurt me like that. You know, like 
that was that is what the wild part for me was because I was like, oh, I wouldn't have said nothing. But he definitely did the right thing. So I think we have to give him credit for growth because she could have just found out on television looks like a dummy in like three months. That's true. Um, yeah. So he does go and tell MLT, uh, look, Emily, Emily about Emily. it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she's like, my feelings are hurt, but like, I'm glad you're being honest, but like, it's still shit to hear this. And Cam really is like, I don't want to do what I always do. Like I'm on, I'm being honest with you about my doubts and my feelings, but like, you're my, you're my best mate in here. And I like want to do disgusting things to you, but like, that's how it's supposed to be. Like, do you want to be my girlfriend? And then they end up together and they get a green light. And I was like, I thought they were breaking up again. Like, I thought they had already broken up. Snaps for Cam and Emily. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. The snaps, seriously, I mean, it's a cult. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's slam poetry. No, you're in a cult. Call your dad. <laughs> yes. Yes. And. You still get to be on the show for a couple more days. Exactly. <laughs> yes, and. Um, okay, can we talk about, wait, can we take a moment? And this gets acknowledged by, uh, what is it, De- Desiree is the the voiceover mm-hmm. narrator. Sure. Watermelon jumbly pot? Is that what he said? Like, he he's yeah, talking about he how Emily makes him that. feel. Yeah. A watermelon jumbly pot is Okay, do we have any UK listeners? Is this something else that I'm missing out on and I'm, I don't understand? I think Curse is going to Google it for us. So I watermelon jumbly watermelon. Pot. I thought watermelon was like his head. And then yeah, like jumbly that is pot definitely is like, his head. Like his, his head is being a jumbly pot of yeah. watermelon. Of okay. emotion. Yeah. Um, like, when I Google watermelon jumbly pot, it just shows how to grow a watermelon in a pot. So I think mm. he made that up. Okay. Yeah. I think That's he was just saying original for watermelon pico de gallo, which I'm oh, listening. I'm into. Even <laughs> watermelon, if you mix it like with jalapeno or something spicy, I'm really into that. Yeah, I think I think he was just saying that he was like, you know, he's he like, lost head head. Head. it was enough to confuse me that I wrote it down where I'm like, is this like, did I miss a reference or something? But you know, it's, it's, it was mind bottling. Like when you put all your thoughts in a bottle and you shake it up. You know, that's like watermelon jumbly pie. Jumbly pie. Yeah, yeah this it's mind bottling. But wait, this watermelon pico de gallo looks so good. Okay. Should we ask Puya and Phil to do a watermelon jumbly pot uh, challenge? I, yes. they were, I think um, they've already done that. <laughs> <laughs> but like, they put it in a pot and shake it up. Oh, okay. Well, sure. Yeah, absolutely. On the band With vodka or something. Oh my God. You're trying to kill them? I mean, I think that's like, are you going to get an inheritance if Phil dies? Like, what's the what's the win for you here? I'm just saying, I'm not saying like a whole bottle of Is is Liana in on this insurance scam that uh, that Jenny has going? (laughs) Because if not, let me text my buddy and tell her to get this life insurance going. I'm trying to think of what a watermelon jumbly pot is, and I'm think I'm picturing a pot. It's watermelon watermelon and vodka. With vodka poured in it, and you shake up the watermelon, make it a jumbly pot. Mm-hmm. And the watermelon becomes soaked with vodka, and then you have to eat all the watermelon. You get drunk. See, see, back I in my day, about jumbly pot. <laughs> I say back in my day, we would just stick the bottle of vodka inside the watermelon, and yeah. then just. And then well, that's, that's not a jumbly pot. I've been <laughs> that's a, that's a, a jumbly melon. melon. Um, <laughs> we can we also get Carly and Joey have a date where they end up getting a green light that I did not think they deserved the green light. <laughs> so they I literally do, yeah. are just like, hey. I like you. Maybe this will be a thing. Maybe it'll be a thing. And then they get the green light. I do not think they deserved it. She basically says, hey, you're not a douche. And I'm like, yes, he is. And you don't Listen, deserve the green light. I think that you need, honestly, like sometimes when you go from having like a douchebag um, relationship or whatever, um, the next person that isn't a douchebag, it's just like the light, like there's light and you're just like, mm-hmm. wow, you're the greatest person ever when like maybe they're just not a douchebag. And that's the, and I yeah. really think that the, Joey is getting very lucky here because I don't think that he's I think that we if he was at the beginning of the cast and he had a different storyline, I think we definitely see Joey being a douchebag. Um but I think that he came into a situation where like he just had to be a good guy if he wanted to be on the show whatsoever. And that's what we came into. But like 
poor Carly, like my heart, like I feel, I, I feel like a little bit of like a kindred spirit with Carly. Maybe it's just also because she's from Toronto, but like, I feel like me years ago might've been Carly and she's just like, Oh, like the, this date was so rom- Like we had yachts. We had like nice romantic they like, made dinners cocktails. and stuff. It was like a bar, a tequila, there was a bar, a bar, tequila, and a hot guy. And I was like, well, you got two out of three. I was like, that guy's speaking Ginny Autumn language. <laughs> I mean, first of all, it is kind of the date that I'm looking for. But I'm like, oh, I mean, they're like, good enough, like Ginny, for your day, we have White Claws and Big Brother. Are you ready? <laughs> and Ginny's like, just take me now. Like, <laughs> take me out. Take me out. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> um, it's just, it's so weird to me. But like, whatever. I hope they're happy. So we end up finding out, okay, it's over now. The prize fund is $55,000. It's, I guess, locked now. Um, and uh, there, the, annou- the big announcement is that only one person will win the money. So, Did anybody have a rooting interest at this point? The, the Melinda. Melinda. Because again, See, I would die for her. I would jump in front of a here's train the thing, for her. Like, I personally, of, of my favorite people on the cast, yes, it's Melinda. I. I, my favorite person by Don't far. Don't try and tell me you care about their growth. Stop it. I, oh, me? No, I'm not saying I care about it, but I'm saying absolutely there's no way a man isn't winning this because one, hashtag mis- misogyny, and two, they're they're going to say like, oh, the, only the men can have the most growth because the mm. men are going to have the hardest time resisting sex because of how we think about see okay men so, and women and gender roles and all of this I bullshit. think that this is a very good point but I also think that in this season the men that are left at this point are just like worse people than the women that are left at this point so they like naturally started so at a lower point so it like didn't take as that's much what for I'm them saying. to grow. that's what I'm saying is like I was like you know people are not going to recognize Carly's growth or like Melinda like recognizing that she was pushing Marvin away and like you know being honest with her feelings like none of that was going to be recognized because this show perpetuates that same trope of like oh like women only play games with men because like the men started it and like they're the ones that decide like what the terms of the relationship will be and like they're just going to make the men that they want jealous in order to get their attention. And so I just think that there's like no world where a woman's personal growth under this, these circumstances is going to be rewarded. It's going, we are going to reward the man for being like, good job. Like you only um, like had to have sex once with this person. <laughs> like, congratulations. You are such a hero. I, yeah. I don't disagree. I don't I, I I actually I want to take it one step further. Let's talk about the strategy of this game. There is a social <laughs> game. A, a there, a there's a social game element yeah. that we haven't yes. talked about. And here's the thing, because let's go ahead and just jump to the winner. The winner is, ends up being Marvin, right? Marvin yeah, so ends the, up winning. The final three are Cam, Carly, and Marvin. And Marvin wins four three over Cam. Carly got zero vo- votes. Um, and like, I think that like Melinda grew more than Marvin. Well, so, so here's what my point is, is that, is it about growth or is it about how many friends you have? Because Carly, we can count her out, but there's at least two episodes where she's not talking to nobody. Cause she's just moping. She's mm-hmm. pissed about the chase, the chance chase thing or whatever. And she's just hanging out. She hasn't, she hasn't made that connection with him. So she's not going to get his vote. There's no world where she gets his vote. Um, so that automatically weeds her out of like just that one vote. Her one guaranteed vote is gone. Then you have Joey who should vote for her. I was kind of upset that he did not vote for I her. I think production you, told him he wasn't allowed because it would have been a tie. Yeah. And so then you have um, Melinda who is automatically going to vote for Marvin. You have Emily who's automatically going to vote for uh, Cam. And then you have Chance Chase chase who is friends with marvin they've been buddies since day one they have been a tag team since day one so he's automatically going to get that vote too so it just start you kind of just see where it starts to you could see where the needle starts to go in one direction where it's like okay well who has the most 
personal growth and connection with everybody on a superficial level, even friendship wise. Right. Because like, even though the goal is like, can you stop having sex long enough to like connect with people? Ultimately your personal relationships do come in handy at the very end, because now I have to vote for you. Like we know that Nathan and Marvin were close. We saw them hanging out. We saw uh, Chase and Marvin close. We saw Melinda close with Marvin throughout their entire season. Of course, Tabitha has to vote for somebody, you know, but like, and none of her, none of her couplings were up there. So she gets to just pick. But it's kind of like you have the entire roughly 10, 11 days to to build these bonds with everybody. And then that's what paid off in the end. So I did. They hate. didn't go. They didn't go in knowing that this was how it was going to no, be decided. Not, not, or that. Yeah, not at all. I think that's my thing, though. I think that I actually appreciate the point that, like, if your goal is to make these people make meaningful connections that don't have anything to do with sex, then a lot of times, yeah, the people who also live with you. They were calling mm. each other a family for a very, oh, yeah. like, you know, like yeah, Chase yeah. cried when yeah. Kayla got sent home. Exactly. So it's kind of like <laughs> if Chase is in that position, how many votes does Chase get? Right. Yeah. Like we know he doesn't get Carly, but he probably gets all the men's votes, you know. So it's not even about who made the most personal connection with their significant other. It's like, were you able to remove the horniness from your mind long enough to connect with the people that we have on the cast? And so, yeah, a part of me kind of hates this as a twist because like what? Because like. I would have, I honestly, I think justice for Carly in this situation, but also mm-hmm. justice for Cam. Like he was obviously like everyone said it. He was the worst off to begin with. And then he's come to this moment where he's able to resist this hot woman in the shower who's inviting him and to think about somebody else outside of himself. But he's never going to get the votes that Marvin's going to get because he's just not friends with the rest of these people, probably because he's spent all his time with Emily. So, right. you know, I think. For the next season, they have to change it up or someone like me is going to come in trying to game the system. Season three has already filmed before season two aired. So season three, they can do the exact same bullshit again. I'm curious what's going to happen for season four. Yeah, because someone like me is going to try to game the system. I want to be friends with everybody as well as have an emotional relationship with someone else. So it's not it's less about me and you Emily it's more about hey maybe me and Emily need to double date with Carly and Joey you know so then maybe Joey and Carly will vote for us if we're ever in that situation Um, totally changes the whole like premise of the show which is again like they've they changed how things work from one to two mm -hmm. and so are they going to change it up again so that people can't game the system because it's like you don't know whose money you're spending. You don't know who's going to decide money. who's going mm-hmm. to like. So it adds an element of like, you know, kind yeah. of unexpected whatever. So people are just going to be like, you know what? I have no idea how this is going to work. So I might not even be spending my own money. I might as well just go off and do my own thing. So they're going to go mm-hmm. into the season thinking a certain way. But the one thing I wanted to like go going back to like the Cam versus Marvin of it all is that like, you know, we obviously got sound bites of saying like, oh, when this person came in, like they were the biggest player, which is like, again, it's like, you don't know because you didn't know yeah. this person. You were just like getting like, a, you're getting whatever sound bites or stories that they told you coming in. And like, in terms of the actual confines of the season, like, and again, I don't feel like he deserves a freaking award for this, but like, we at least see Cam in two situations where he has a woman coming on to him and he resists. We see mm-hmm. it with Christina where they almost kiss when they have that little date. And oh, he, no, we're not giving credit to Cam in that situation. Oh, I'm not saying we're giving credit to him, <laughs> but I'm saying like if you're talking about being challenged mm-hmm. and and like, you know, making a conscious decision to resist in that situation, if that's what the premise of the show is, like there is that situation. And then there's also the Tabitha situation where like, she is basically like, Hey, do you want to get in the shower with me? And he, you know, takes maybe longer than he needs to, to make the decision, but he ultimately decides not to. Whereas like, I don't really think that Marvin was tested to the same degree. Like, you know, even like L comes in and at first and was like kind of interested in Marvin. And then after like having that like weird little like double Double date date, thing, she was like, I'm not like, I'm not feeling his vibe and doesn't even decide to like pursue him. I just don't feel like, again, I'm against like congratulating people for like not being the worst douchebag they could possibly the be yeah. and giving them $55,000 that they probably don't deserve. But I, if we're looking at it on paper, I feel like Cam Cam probably did get tested more than Marvin, Marvin oh. did in terms of like, 
But again, yeah, but like, what, is the, what is have, the rubric? What is yeah, the rubric no. here? Cam like, is the winner of this show. Like, you but, just can't. But you can. You can. And, and I'm with Jenny on this one, 100%. Because here's the thing. The top three are Carly, Marvin, and Cam. Carly got into a situation where she was over her head. She thought, like, I came here to hook up. She she caught feelings for somebody who didn't have feelings for her. So her story is largely, how do I shake that? Marvin did the same exact thing. He came in thinking, I'm just going to hook up with people. Then Melinda made him jealous. So then that became their whole storyline. He was just, she was strictly caught up in that conflict between like, oh, does she want me? Oh, I'm going to make her jealous because she looks like she's talking to this guy. And she looked, they both got roped into drama. Whereas Cam's drama was specifically Cam. It was Cam and Emily. And then there were temptations for Cam to have to kind of like navigate. And then he had to grow. It wasn't like a like a, like a story of two people for Cam. Emily journey. was a perfect angel the entire time. Basically, like she did nothing wrong. She did except basically, for yeah. just being great, and, and so it really was up to Cam to like. Yeah, I feel like if 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 Marvin is not in a situation where he met someone who actually makes him jealous, right? Or mm-hmm. like, or if Carly is not in a situation where she met somebody who doesn't like who who does not have those same feelings for her. She doesn't get a chance to be in the top three. Every time you do this, if you simulate the season a hundred times, Cam is still going to be in top three because as long as he links up with Emily and decides that you're worth it, he's always going to show growth. You know, where these other two people more found like, dang, I hit a wall. You know, like I'm used to playing this way and it's not working. Now I have to do something because there's no other options here. Like I can't jump to the next person because I have to sleep in the same room with this person. Cam never, he never strayed all the way you know he always had that battle and so i if personally for me i would have voted for cam but i understand again that if you have the outside relationships and it's a jury situation then you're going to win if you're in a marvin situation again i'm a strategic just, game I'm just like, <laughs> I, I i feel i feel icky about giving any one of these people fifty five thousand dollars because i don't think At that least, they're I, so i think able to happened. handle it Here's what I think happened. I think last season, everyone got like $3,000 before taxes. And then they were like, why did we go through the effort of writing all these checks and writing all the tax (laughs) slips? They're like, we're just giving it to one person this time. It's easier that way. I mean, I loved the twist. It would definitely made the end of the show more interesting to me. We got a yeah. jury. Like we, we got a jury. Expect a jury. Right my alley, it yeah. gave the other people that were just like non like non factors uh, a function at the end of the show, which I appreciated. And would also I think about it from my perspective. I'm like, if I were just one of these non like nothing people, then at least I got to have a say in something. But like, mm-hmm. I, I don't. I don't know. I just feel like, you know, we were voting between like. Two of the literally because Carly was got no votes. We were voting yeah. between two men that spent the most money of the season, mm-hmm. and yeah. like the what is the point of the season? It they just goes to show. It they just goes to night. show you can spend money, and that's how you win. Well, that and you well, have like, to you have to be so able to lie. The, tells yeah, that tells the story of like okay, get your nut, and then Jenny. And, and then this call. is a PG a PG well, podcast, Jenny. You listen, get to of all net. the things that have been said, we've said nothing. This show and this, <laughs> this podcast, is Bible study, you're Jenny. Take please, issue with me saying I listen to this in the nuts. car with my family, Jenny. How <laughs> well, dare I you? I think that that is a poor life choice. I part. have that's, my family has a name. <laughs> Look, I don't think you should but that's what I'm saying is like then that gives you the message of like okay so I mean it's kind of it's kind of like what Cam was saying about like you know what I'm gonna make an investment here where I'm like I'm gonna get this out of my system and I'll be able to wait a little bit longer mm-hmm. but like I honestly think that that's part of part of what happened here where it was like you know these two were able to make some sort of physical connection with the other person so that they were able to like take a break from it and mm-hmm. like you know chill on it a little bit to the point and then and then all you do is you get to the end of the show ask them to be your girlfriend mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you're a hero for just like bare minimum finishing strong like that's yeah. literally all you have to do is like okay spend a little money in the beginning I'm gonna say it again. Get your nut, and mm-hmm. then yeah. all of a sudden, how many times have you said as, it now? Two, like three, six. When you, a couple yeah, times. Six times. <laughs> she won't stop. It's a, she's a monster. 
I'm like a squirrel. I just can't stop Can calling I one nuts. Just stop giving thank, nuts. Thank God Rob couldn't make it. Yeah. Oh my God. I would be mortified. He'd be like, I can't bring this girl in. Well, sort of I dead. mean, this wouldn't, this wouldn't have happened if we were here. <laughs> We'd be like, and oh, then that's thing. Yeah. Like, anyways, the show is over. Bye. And then Bye. Rob would make some sort of like double entendre. And then we'd be like, cool. We like this show. And then it would be over. No, Bye. no. Rob Bye, would Dad. say, Probably not. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm pretty sure there's not a too hot to handle season three. Sorry, this is the end of the Sorry, this is I, it. I watched <laughs> the premiere of this season with Rob on a Zoom call, and it was like watching a show with my dad. I was yeah, like, I, I know. I heard that you guys watched it together, and I'm like, I don't know if I could do that. You would have lost me. Saying, I would have just... hung up the call at Rumpy Pumpy. <laughs> like, I would not have gotten any further than that in the intro. Like, super sexy, super uh, spreaders. I'd have been like, bye. It was a lot of, it was a lot of me being <laughs> like, what? Ew! 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 <laughs> yeah, well, the, and like the premiere is a lot of nonsense too. But yeah. like, I mean, I I really hope that at some point, even off podcast, I can get I have a conversation with Rob because I want to know yeah. what he thinks of Melinda and Marvin. Does he think that they have? Do they have the sauce? I don't know. Do they have what it takes. Well, they do have fifty thousand dollars now, and so here's the thing. I think that's a, that might have also played into the voting as well. They're on two different continents. Throw them a couple thousand dollars. Maybe they can to move make in it together. Easier. Yeah, maybe mm-hmm. they can yeah. commute. Maybe they can have some type of like, you know, long distance type thing going on. It make, it'll make it a lot easier. So I could get that. Um, but yeah, I probably wouldn't have voted for Marvin. And I also don't think it's fair that the, uh, that the women didn't really get to be in the running, except for Carly, who had nobody. Um, so and yeah, if so Carly had a serious relationship, they would have given it to the man if it wasn't Joey. Been That's what I'm minutes. saying is like, I just don't think that the women in, in this format, again, like, and this is a different type of sh- like, we can have conversations upon conversations about like how hard it is for a woman, a woman to win a jury vote in all of these other strategic like social strategy type shows that we talk about but like in this context where the moral of the story is learning to like resist temptation and like make it like a like a deep connection with somebody I just think that like there's no way that anyone is ever looking at the story and being like, you know what? That woman really grew from this. Like, because of the way that they're put into these boxes and like what their story is. And like, again, it's constantly, you see Carly's like trying to open up and like chase, like blows her off. And like, you know, Melinda like was really into Marvin and then she like has to make him jealous because he's not paying her enough attention. Like they're constantly like creating this narrative of like, the woman is actually interested if the man would just like show up. So I just mm-hmm. think that there's like no situation where like we're going to reward the woman's journey. It's going to be about the man like that we congratulate for like not coming 60 times during the season. Coming to where? <laughs> um, I'm sorry, listen. Fruition. Honestly, oh my gosh. Chappelle being confused about this <laughs> makes sense with it's all the, the men on this season. Well, no, um, I definitely was just trying to get Jenny to say nut again. So <laughs> But getting so, there nuts. But what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking here is that what we need is a season of Tabitha's. We need to bring Tabitha and her crew on next well, year. Well, we know how you feel about that, Chappelle. You want 60 Tabitha. So Chappelle wants to be Tabitha. on the next season with Tabitha and all of her friends. <laughs> Just use um, me for my body and choke me with a leather belt. Um <laughs> now that's, that's how it. the out of context account is. It's in context, thing. baby. Yeah, but anyway, well, um, take me out. Hey. But no, seriously, what I'm saying is, we need like the women who are going to be the avatars for like that growth, right? Like the women who like you can just never see a world where she turns her life around. And then we maybe will get that story. But I'm with Jenny. I still don't see them being able to paint that accurately because you're mm-hmm. always going to find a guy who's less mature. It's always going to be available. There's there is a there is a me for every Tabitha. Annoying. And, like then why like do a do like do a cast of like of like you know dominatrixes and like yes. a bunch of simps like <laughs> yes give Pick me, me a different story you know what i, I mean I, I, we, I simp. i'm not ready <laughs> to see Chappelle get choked with a belt on national please <laughs> i have the belt like so I, I want you to have that experience Chappelle, and to be happy and fulfilled but i don't think i'm ready to see it on you TV. text me about autoerotic asphyxiation all the time and now all of a sudden no, you get on a podcast you want to act a different way 
Again, I don't understand why I'm not included in these. No, it's because there, there's an there, episode of Bojack Griffin, Horseman. No, that's Otter not Rock what this podcast is about. Kirsten, texted Kirsten me was talking about, about it, it no. and I was like, Kirsten, mm-hmm. how dare you? But also, I mean, if we can find us a tablet, then okay. Listen, that's a, a story for another time. <laughs> I just but, think Chappelle is trying to paint me as uh, like this monster texting him when he is an equal participant in our conversations. I, I am definitely. I'm not just listen. I'm definitely participating. Just want to throw Kirsten <laughs> on the bus with me. So, but I, I think, I think Jenny, what Crawl we're looking right for here, <laughs> we're looking for a male and a female winner at the same time, right? Like a yeah. man and woman. Because that way, like if they want to reward the couple, like no, like, I, don't even, I don't even think a couple though. I even think like pick, okay, an, pick two individuals, two different. You you split the yeah, it and it could be yeah, two I'd separate be with either or yeah, yeah. So like it could have been it could have been Marvin and Carly, or it could have been you know what I mean. It could have been like yeah. him and Melinda or something like that. Yeah. Like there's like a like a man prize and a woman prize. Like or just, seems just so fucked up to have. think about. But again, like I just feel like there's. No, in, with this format there's no situation like carly did not stand a chance and i still think that she probably did learn something during this i think experience. she learned yeah. the most because yeah. she did she didn't get kicked off you would think anybody else who gets basically dumped like instantly like don't get me wrong she got dumped on like episode four but mm-hmm. after episode two there was nothing there and she yeah. was like forcing it she was like please talk to me tell me i'm pretty tell me anything and she pivoted she managed to not get voted off the show yeah, because they could have easily said, "Well, Carly, girl, ain't nobody feeling you. You can go." But she still like tried to make the meaningful connection. She tried her best, and then when somebody else came in, she didn't close down to where she wasn't willing to talk to anybody else. So she made a legit claim for it. I think in a situation like this, you do have to have a separate prize because it's so hard to separate ourselves from TV and the patriarchy at the same time. To where it's mm-hmm. like this is the story and the narratives that people like and the people that people know, and we don't want to tell that story. We want to tell a different story. And so, in order to do that, I think you have to do it at least until we can make a general case for a television product to show these stories and to tell them accurately because I agree with you 100% there's no way where Carly would have won this show and she did go through the most of anybody you need to know like you need to have self-awareness and like know like what your journey is and like how to like how to talk about like what you're experiencing so that they can still like make a tv product out of it and that's like where the difference between like the Carly and like the Kayla where like Kayla just didn't even like get her foot in the door with anyone. So it's like, how are they supposed to make anything interesting from this? Where at least like Carly, like, you know, it went poorly and she was able to pivot and like, talk about like, you know, what she's learned from her previous relationships and what she was seeing in, in chase and all of that. So, yeah. I mean, you should reward that. Like you, she still gave you television. She still made herself an entity on this show. <laughs> Yeah, and I think she's most likely to leave the show and actually be a different person in the dating world. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, Marvin and Melinda are leaving this show together. So, unless they break up and then Marvin goes off and, like, maybe he learns things from the relationship, we'll never know if this actually changed Marvin as a person. We'll just know that Marvin found love on the show. Same yeah. thing with, uh, mm-hmm. with Cam and, um, and Emily. We know that they found love on the show. This is 10 people. Then five of them are ineligible because of your sexuality. So you got five women yeah. and then they all pair off. And then now it's just you and one other option. And then they That's bring in some, some sexy saying. decoys. But Carly is the one who's like, she had to grow by herself. She had to grow mm-hmm. through, two, you know, a failed relationship. And then like a new relationship that she's not even sure is a relationship. She's just like kind of feeling them out. But her growth you, is going to be tangible very quickly. Whereas these other two people just have to stay together. That's yeah, it. you just that's what I'm saying is like it's like you you get your sexual stuff out of the way and then you find the person that you're going to like continue your journey with on the show. And then at right. the end, you just say, Hey, do you want to be my girlfriend? I think I'm falling in love with you. And then everyone stands uh-huh. and you win money. Like or, or wow. on the first day you heard Jenny Autumn say it first. <laughs> okay. I, I do. I think that we've been talking in circles for a little while, to be honest. Um, what? I what both, you you know, both, of, <laughs> both of you are right. And I agree with you, but I think that we um, should probably start trying to put this um, podcast to bed. Uh, <laughs> so at the end of the season, I did try to look up and see if these couples are still together. So, um, so Cam and Emily are doing some sort of Instagram campaign for Boohoo. So they might be together or they're just doing it for money. Uh, I don't know. That's the question. Um, Marv and Melinda are liking each other's posts. They still both follow each other, but we don't have any firm info yet. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then Carly and Joey. 
Carly's yes. been in Florida a lot lately. Yes. So they might yes. still be together, but they don't interact that much on social media yet. So um, TBD, uh, but they might they might all be together still. I would be happy. Honestly, like I would yeah. be most happy for them because I feel like there's the least expectation yeah. of the fan base yeah. of them being together. And so I feel like, again, I'm so cynical about this shit now. I think that if if Carly and Joey are together, then like maybe they actually really do like each other and they've That's she's learned cute. something and he's like the right vibe for her. And that That's would precious. be great. No, I love that. We love that. Okay. So So that's um, it. That's another season of Too Hot to Handle. That's did we, dope. did we miss anything? Is there anything else people want to I mean, talk about? Um, one thing Jessica Lee's pointed out on Twitter is that did y'all notice the soundtrack is just kind of like <laughs> whenever there's a random scene of emotion, the sa- whatever the song is, is talking about the the emotion in the in the same exact moment. So you so you have like Carly, like like uh like talking to Joey about their future, and in the background you have a song like "It's Your Future." It's yeah. like it's, what? Oh, yeah, it's very they're, on they're the not nose. real songs, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> right? It's so funny. I will say- you- she said I it and I was like, what? credit music every single time. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know why. It's did any, so did either of you notice Marvin's Gengar pendant? That is that what it is? It's Gengar? Yeah. It's a Gengar. That's actually kind of live. I it like took that. a Box. long time for me to realize what it was. And then when I did, I was like, okay, Marvin. Okay, here's what's upsetting about how good looking Marvin is. Yeah. He about. manages to make a fucking bucket hat that looks like it came from Bass Pro Shops looks ah. good. Like, it literally looks like a hunting like camo style bucket hat and I'm like, you know what? That's the look. And I'm into it. Okay, bucket hats That's unfair. are very summer 2021. I'm gonna get a bucket sorry, hat with something on ridiculous everyone. on it. I'm getting well, it I and I don't one care with, if it works or not. I have a rubber duck bucket hat. Actually, it's like yes. the first gift that Phil ever gave Aww. me. Um, but <laughs> I'm just saying like, just because they're on trend right now doesn't mean that they work on everyone. And Are I you telling just, me I can't pull off a bucket hat? No, I'm not you saying you can. Because I'll have my hair, it'll be in two little no, braids. No, no. I'm saying so I think it'll be cute. But I think yeah. that like almost on, like, on, a, on a man, I'm like, mm. and I found myself with Marvin in this fucking camo bucket hat being like, you look slick as hell. Like, what the hell? I not fair. And if I saw that walking through, why am I walking through a Bass Pro Shop? Don't know. But mm-hmm. if I saw that, I'd be like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I think the Bass Pro Shop might be a Canadian store also. No, no, no. Well, we got it here. Oh, okay. okay, okay thank okay, you. Okay, okay. I, I was making that reference very liberally, like just hoping that it landed. No, nah, no, nah, no. Nah, because so. I have a, there's okay. a, a hat from Bass, Bass Pro Shop that I have my eye on, actually. It's, 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 it's <laughs> like, like a bucket hat? No, no. It's just like a base. It's like a baseball cap, but it's ironic. Like, you know, like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. I don't. Got him. I, I think that yeah. that's how Marvin got away with it because you're like, you. this is not, like, I don't think that Nathan could get away with the camo bucket hat because you're just like, mm, the cowboy thing. Like, you thing. live in Texas. Like, get yeah, it out. like, it's a little too. Um, but I think, I think with Marvin, it's like, you're Parisian. Like, you would never, you, you don't hunt. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> They're like, we shoot clay pigeons. Yeah. <laughs> All I wanted to add is that the one, the one of the workshop, um, like people, Alexandra Roxo, yeah. I pegged that girl's fucking sign from the second I saw oh, her. Oh, I, I love her when I you was right. that girl and my eyebrows went up. I, I did not girl, peg this her just... personally. <laughs> Woohoo! Janae! Wait, what? Did they tell us her sign on the no, show? I Googled her. Okay, what's her sign? Janae was like, she I know said, this woman, okay? No, because, I got it. Because I purposely Googled her and I was like, this is a Pisces woman. I right was here. gonna guess Pisces! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes. Okay. I was like Love Alexander because we saw her a couple times through the season, and also I was I spent the whole season being like these are not these are, these are not these people's jobs. They're they actors. did. They did a freaking Viking funeral for the final um activity. They all wrote on a necklace and then they sent it to sea and lit it on fire. I will say I wrote down all of the words that everyone really wrote on it. the necklaces <laughs> in my notes and. I have nothing written down for Elle. 
Yeah. Which says so much. No, L wrote down, um, L wrote down being a user, being, being used, used yeah. and one more thing. I, I think they, I was. honestly, there was a point where they sped through a few people's because they were telling us these people aren't important. No, they showed they, L's full uh, one. They, they, they showed it, L's, but, but they, they skipped. But they, they did Tabitha. it faster. I, cause yeah. I thought yeah, I, Tabitha wrote down like not that selfish, selfish, harsh, and judgmental. I have yeah. nothing written down for L because I couldn't type fast enough because they said this yeah. girl is not important to this story. And I said, okay. And she really I wasn't. And she's yeah. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. I wish I'm, that L had come in sooner. I'm, saying. I'm like, they should, they should bring back the newbies for the next season. That's what I'm saying. But thinking. it's frustrating because it's like they bring these people in and like, you know, the even like, with with uh christina and uh what's his nuts robert, robert like nuts. they brought them in and like seconds. they could have had a story mm-hmm. but like i don't know it's they just like, frustrating to see like to see them bring in people and ultimately like our final like our top three people are the people that were there the longest because of course they're gonna have the biggest growth they've been there the longest yeah like no one no one who's been there just a little bit long like has a chance here so yeah that's how i feel about the circle too that's why i don't watch the circle because like i can't be four weeks into this this thing and then all of a sudden you bring in a rando and i'm like now i have to and i'm supposed to care about this person and like for them yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. absolutely okay that's (laughs) it that's the season that's two on the handle season two (laughs) that's a wrap a finale Um, (laughs) this has been iconic i'm so happy that both of you came here thank you to both of you for joining me Yes. Thank you for letting me come and do whatever I No, this did is for incredible and iconic and I, I love it. And I have no notes. And if anyone else has a note, then I can tell them to kindly keep it to themselves. Um Jenny, if people want to hear more from you, where can they find you? I am on social media at Jenny Autumn, uh Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, and I'm just uh preparing myself emotionally and mentally for big brother 23 and what that will do to us because i feel like i feel like everyone's feeling very positive and again i don't know maybe i my tone has been very cynical uh but You've been I'm pessimistic always, can you a spell little it bit, yeah and it's weird <laughs> because i'm normally i'm normally very like optimistic and like rose colored glasses but i think that like right now i'm just kind of like I'm you just ready for the shoe to drop, you know? You just yeah. watched 10 episodes of The Dregs of Society. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, Listen, that's probably why. Okay, I'm anyway, not knowing yeah. how to spell pessimistic <laughs> hit me in my soul because I too. <laughs> I too. I mean, honestly, if I had to spell it right now, I would be nervous about how I would do it. And it, that's fine. And I'm a good <laughs> speller in general. I have a degree in English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, Chappelle, what does that actually mean? Exactly. Like, exactly. Um, so, Chappelle, if people want to hear more from you, where can they find you? Well, you know, I'm not on social media, so I just kind of just. I just <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, follow you can me on Twitter. On Twitter at two a.m. Yes, at yeah, probably at three or four in the morning, depending on what coast you're on. But yeah, I'm on Twitter at Chappelle's underscore show. That's C H A P P E L L S underscore show, um, where I'm probably tweeting random things and uh, yeah, arguing with people sometimes. But I, I too, am ready for Big Brother. So I think you can look for me and Jenny and Kirsten all in the in the, in the upcoming weeks talking about this new season. So yeah, yes. that's where you can find me. And you're you still have the the rewind going, right? Oh yes, I forgot about this thing that I do every week. Yes, it's <laughs> it's Joe Lai on the Reality TV Rewind on the RJP Rewind. Uh, so we are talking about the Joe shows this month. Yes, Average Joe, Joe Schmo, and Joe Millionaire are coming up. Uh, okay. in whatever order I don't really know and so uh, yeah okay. check that out too um, but otherwise I'm just hanging out waiting on Jenny and Kirsten to call me <laughs> what a dream oh my I will call you I uh, have nothing to call you for like I just want to call you to talk to you is that okay yeah, let's, He'll do answer. He'll let's, answer. let's do it let's do it and if people are not yet sick of me uh, you can follow me on social media at Kirsten said what including twitch.tv slash Kirsten said what Love Island is coming back this Ooh. week and Brian Scally and I will be back breaking it all down uh it's snap snaps because we're all in a club now Um, uh, as well as of course big brother keep an eye out for all of us on the wrap up speed of course it is the start of a new month so it's a great time to become a patron of rob has a podcast Uh, you can find out more information at rob has website.com slash patron but there are a lot more patron exclusive shows coming up so highly recommend you check that out 
But uh, until next season of Too Hot to Handle, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>